Hello. <laughs> huh. I figured I was gonna like just start the stream and just leave it for a while just so, like I could go and do like some other things some people like filter it in or whatever but <laughs> then you show up almost immediately and I'm sitting on the toilet and I'm like well <laughs> ah. it's all fun though it's it's a good oh my light curtains. Turn on, please. Hello. There we go. Huh. So, yeah. Before I start today, I have, like, a, a few things that I want to... Yay! I have a few things I want to, uh, Talk about, I guess. Uh... So, I was, like, kind of curious what, like, the community thought about Robin as a character. And most of the people think that that episode is pretty transphobic and I can absolutely see that considering how Athena just outed them in front of everyone. <laughs> and uh... <laughs> yeah. And so I, 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 I totally understand why they would like think of it as transphobic, but Personally, I'm... I don't really think so. <laughs> like... I guess I'm probably not the right person to talk about this at all, considering... I'm not trans or gender fluid or... You know? <laughs> but, um... Yeah. You know, Ace Attorney is a game with like very exaggerated characters, which is why Robin does that 180 flip. Yes, uh, that was that was very much the case, and it's 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 a family, and like your parents' wishes are really important in Japan, as far as I'm aware, at least. I like had to like look them up. I don't. I don't know what pronoun to use for them, so I'm gonna use they, them. Um, because I don't think Robin themselves know what they want. Because they keep switching between the two, like, all the time. Which I found really interesting. But, like, the fact that Capcom even wanted to go there in the first place, yeah, they may not have, like... Um, that's what I'm looking for. They may not have done it in, like, the best way possible, but the fact that they went there, still. I think that I don't want to be like, oh my god, Capcom did that. Holy shit, they are so woke. I don't want to be like that. That's not what I mean at all. Yeah, exactly. The beeps change from the feminine one to the masculine one, like, all the time. So I, I think that the reason why they made them so so feminine when they were feminine is because, like I said, Ace Attorney is a pretty exaggerated game with exaggerated characters. So to like make it not make sense, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like you know, you kind of need that like really like abrupt change you know for it to make sense in a way or to be like more obvious though people are still very much in denial <laughs> for some reason like it's right there so yeah i i, I totally understand where they're coming from like outing someone like that is not cool <laughs> and the fact that Athena did that on, like, behalf of psychology. And as, like, a therapy session, that's, like, uh, you know. So I, I, to I totally get that part. Yeah, exactly. They are supposed to be exaggerated because that kind of, like, gets their character more, like, 
they get across better. Is that the right word? I don't even know. But like, yeah. So I think that Robin, like I said, Robin themselves doesn't really know what they want because they grew up uh, as a boy, but they actually were a girl the entire time. But now it's like become part of their personality, right? But they also really like feminine things and it's, they don't really know like what exactly they want. They want kind of like both things, though they like, I guess they lean more in like the feminine uh, spectrum. <laughs> Something like that. Anyways, yeah. I just I just thought that was interesting. I looked it up last night and I wanted to talk about it. Also, uh, so I upload these VODs onto my YouTube channel. I love Robin, honestly. And... <laughs> Yeah, so I'm on my YouTube channel. I've gotten some, like, uh, copyright claims lately. And the first one is from Capcom, and I was like, okay, that's fine, I guess. But the weird part is that it's just, like, this random part, mid-gameplay. I'm like... Why two minutes in the middle of the gameplay? Like, if it was a, if it was a cutscene, I would have... I maybe would have understood it, but it's, it's literally in the middle of a gameplay, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm like... Capcom? What are you doing? But then there was the one uh, that I uploaded the other day. And, uh... Come your trunk. Someone... With some fucking... Spanish or... Something kind of like... Name, hold on. I can actually look it up. I, I, I posted a, a pic on Twitter. And I'm like... Huh? <laughs> it's so confusing see here where is it so it was claimed by con il nastro rosa frankie extended but it's a song from the official ace attorney soundtrack <laughs> who the fuck Lat latin auto perf latin otter i don't know <laughs> hold on you know here. Who the fuck? And they fucking monetize it. They're just like stealing Capcom's revenue. <laughs> I'm like, hello? I don't get aluminum powder. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, it's like. It, it doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> this is a false copyright claim. So I, I tried to dispute it. Which I, I usually do. I did it with the first one too. Because I was like, oh, I don't understand. Why just a random part of the gameplay? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, just a random two minutes. It's so strange. I'm like, hello? <laughs> it's kind of funny though, not gonna lie. Anyways. Oop. That was all I wanted to bring up before the... The game. <laughs> so, we're just picking up right where, we, right where we left off yesterday. We're going back into a trial. And Apollo is taking a leave of absence. Because, you know, his best friend died. Which, uh, is understandable. And I suppose we should reconvene the trial of Solomon Starbuck or something? Okay, sure. 
Uh, Your Honor, would you please come out from under your bench? <laughs> there are no more bombs, I promise. Oh, yes, um, my apologies. I'm still a little jumpy when it comes to trials involving bombs. Understandable. <laughs> I mean, first the courtroom exploded. And then Mr. Toad ate self-destructed. Oh, was that what happened? I guess that's one way of describing what happened to Tonate. Anyway, it seems that Mr. Justice was seriously wounded by Mr. Tonate's actions. So you, Mr. Wright, will be taking up the defense? Do you have an understanding of what has happened in the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. The defense is ready. Very well. Is the prosecution also ready? <laughs> huh? I take it you'd like me to give the opening statement this time. The... The... What was his name again? The... <laughs> I wanted to call him Jeffree Star. Yeah, Fate. <laughs> you were like thinking Buffy right now. You were like a Fate. No, fuck Fate. <laughs> hmm. I take it you'd like me to give the opening statement this time? Looks like the judge has become a pretty good mind reader. Well, he's certainly seeing more than his fair share of colorful pro 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 prosecutors. <laughs> you could say he's something of a veteran of sorts. Let's see. In the previous part of this trial, we learned that the victim, Clay Terran, may he rest in peace, escaped from launch pad 1, carrying the defendant, Solomon Starbuck. There were explosions on the second floor of the space center and on the rocket itself. The two astronauts used la launch pad 1 corridor, used the, <laughs> used the launch pad 1 corridor to reach the boarding lounge. And how could the victim climb down the ladder if he was carrying the defendant? That was a mystery that needed to be solved. But Mr. Justice proved that the victim was killed in the boarding lounge. Prosecutor Blackwell, were you able to discover any new facts related to this point? Upon further investigation, we discovered an oxygen tank fragment in the lounge. Surprisingly, it would appear that Justice Dono's argument was correct. So that means the testimonies of the first two people on the scene are suspect. There are two people who claim to be the first in the scene. Can we truly trust their statements? Let's see. The two people were Detective Kenneth Arm and Yuri Cosmos, right? You think that one of them might have given a false statement to the police? Yes, it's certainly possible. We might have to do a little more digging. And just as our team was about to cross-examine Detective Arm, the courtroom bombing incident occurred, and the trial was put on hold. That accursed fellow. He killed my witness. He killed Detective Arm. He definitely put the kibosh in anyone asking her about what, what she saw. Exactly. In other words, the question of who killed the victim in the boarding lounge has once again become the main focus of this trial. It's obvious Prosecutor Blackwell still thinks it was Mr. Starbuck. Albright said that Blackwell has a thing against the astronaut. Nevertheless, the defense argues there was a third person in the lounge, and that's who killed the victim. Objection. Hmm. To make such reckless claims in a courtroom takes a bold man. Or a stupid one. There was no third person in the boarding lounge. Or have you gone dotty already? Old man. Objection! I do all the crunch against the <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. We'll see, we'll see who's the dotard after I trounce you with my years of experience, little boy. <laughs> Phoenix, please. In any case, Mr. Starbuck claims he saw someone leaving the, leaving the lounge. Tim Hortons is the way to go. Furthermore, 
A Space Center employee also saw a suspicious figure at the scene. They saw a third person. I can't get used to this. <laughs> hmm, I see. My sister has been running her mouth. That's right, I almost forgot that Aura is Prosecutor Blackwell's sister. No matter. She didn't see this mystery person's face clearly. Therefore, there is no evidence to indicate that this person was not the defendant. Hmm, I guess the possibility that the figure was Mr. Starbuck is, is still there. In brief, we need to determine if the third person was there or not. To this end, we should hear the testimony of one of the first people on the scene. Director Cosmos, huh? Very well. Bailiff, please bring the witness to the stand. Is there with a segue, really? Why, I believe I've seen you before in the newspapers. Of course you have, of course you have. For I am Yuri Cosmos. Director of the Cosmos Space Center, which was, of course, named after me, Yuri Cosmos. Would you have anything you wish to ask me? Looks like he's all geared up to do some bragging. Seven years ago, I successfully launched the Hat 1, and... You're real nice. You're real the ice. <laughs> Everyone already knows how brilliant you are. Even I am trying to hold back my tears at seeing such a great man standing before me. So could you please proceed directly to your important testimony? Ha ha ha! I see this fine young lad has a proper appreciation of greatness. And allow me to begin my... This... <sighs> Why? Can't you use normal words? <laughs> what the fuck is that word even? Epochal? Epochal? See, this is why I hate this. <laughs> epical. It sounds like epical. <laughs> My epical testimony that will be recorded in the annals. <laughs> Sorry, in the annals of history. <laughs> I had to. Speech of Prosecutor Blackwell's just now. It sounded more to me like he was poking fun at Director Cosmos. It's probably for the best that it sailed right over the director's head. Now then, Director Cosmos, the condensed version of your illustrious testimony, please. Detective Arm and I rushed towards the boarding lounge together. We went via the center the control room and peeked in from there to see what was going on inside. We saw a figure standing in the middle of the lounge and Terran lying on the floor. I hate to say it, but I can only imagine this standing figure must have been Starbuck. Hmm, I see. So in your testimony you claim you arrived on the scene after the two had escaped from the launch pad to the lounge. And just after the victim had been killed. Oh, the horror! The humanity! But what I said is what I saw, and what I saw is what I said. And I mean what I say by all means. <laughs> Courageous action to take in the face of such terrifying explosions, wouldn't you say? To save my men, I went personally into the epicenter of danger. Risking my own life for theirs. I don't want to laugh. Well, what do you know? It sounds like the director really cares about his men. Yeah, although it sounds more like he was scared and just had, had a peek from far away. Is the defense ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. Director Cosmos' testimony is pretty vague. 
going to have to press him and draw up more information before I do anything else. That. Her Blackwell also saw a suspicious figure in the lounge. But she gave the statement that it was too dark to see the person's face clearly. Oh, that's right. Did you see this figure's face clearly? No, not clearly. The lighter they were holding illuminated the area around their feet at the time. But other than th uh, th 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 other than that, I could see little else. That's why I could see Terran, but I couldn't see who the other person was. For all you know, it might not have been Mr. Starbuck. Isn't that correct? I would like to believe that. Starbuck isn't the type of man who is capable of murder. Objection. When the witness entered the boarding lounge, there was no third person there. Isn't that correct, great space center director? Yes, that's right. Only Starbuck and Terran were there by that time. After we peeked in, the lounge suddenly went dark, and the figure vanished. You mean they disappeared? That's odd. Objection. The reason the figure appeared to vanish is because it was a defendant. When the witnesses weren't looking, he fell to the floor and feigned unconsciousness. Hold, it. Hold on, D Director Cosmos, did you ever take your eyes off of the scene? For a brief instant, about as long as it takes for a shooting star to go by. If you took your eyes off the scene, then this third person could have escaped during that time. But what escape route could this person have used? The direction opposite the control room, the southern door to the elevators. There's no security lock on that door, so it would have been possible to escape that way. Objection. Things are possible, right, Dono? The real question is... Do you have any proof? Uh, well... Should've knocked on one here. If we're just talking possibilities, we could each profess whatever we'd like. An inmate who used to be a university professor and lunar researcher used to say that there is a kingdom of little green men who live under the surface of the moon. As long as they don't punish us in the name of said moon for what we've, what we've done to it. But I say, where's your proof that this quaint kingdom exists? Is calling your theory a work of fiction, boss? And he's right, I don't have any proof yet. Still. The southern door was a possible escape route. I'd better make a mental note of that. Director Cosmos, may I ask you a question? Yes. Why did you look away from the boarding lounge? Ha ha ha! There's actually another tale of bravery behind the answer to that. It was when Detective Arm saw the figure and raised her gun. Being a great humanitarian and protector of mankind, I tried to stop her. What? You're saying Detective Arm raised her gun as, she, as soon as she saw the figure? I imagine her instincts as a detective told her they were the killer. Hmm, I don't know about that. Were you able to prevent Detective Arm from firing her gun? I'm afraid I was too late. I was unable to stop her. She identified herself clearly and then... She fired two warning shots at the shadowy figure. This information about Detective Arm's actions sound, sounds critically important. Please add it to your testimony. I don't like my hair right now. That's a bit better. Mm hmm. Fire two warning shots. Is that not it? A bullet hole, dumbass. Mm. 
There we go, thank you. Are you sure you were really paying attention to what Detective Arm was doing? Dub my words! Oh yeah, fucking Revit, baby. <laughs> First I will someday be written down in history books! Somehow I don't think that those exact words will ever be written down in any history books. It's alright. Could you please explain yourself so that we can all un understand? You say that Detective Arm fired two warning shots. And yet only one bullet hole was ever found at the scene. What? Only one bullet hole means the gun was only fired once. And yet Director Cosmos is saying Detective Arm fired two shots. No editor would allow such a glaring contradiction into a history book. Objection. Unfortunately for you, the witness's words are true. We confirm that two shots were fired from Detective Arm's gun. Objection. But there was only one bullet hole at the scene. Where did the other bullet hole vanish to? Ah! You should know the answer to that already. I, I should? During the previous trial, a certain oxygen tank was pretended, presented, not presented, presented as evidence. We've already discussed that it was ruptured in the lounge, have we not? Well, it appears that the thing that ruptured it, it pff, that ruptured it was a bullet. A bullet that was found near the tank, to be precise. This bullet was fired from a 38 caliber gun. The same caliber as the detective's gun. What? Sorry, I just want to admire this pose. It's terrifying. <laughs> the rifling marks also match up. First Phoenix. For sure. There's no question that the bullet was fired from Detective Arm's gun. Rifling marks. They're like a gun's fingerprints on the bullet, correct? And examining the rifling marks on the bullet can tell us the, tell us the gun it was fired from. One of the bullets the detective fired found its way into the holographic image display. The other bullet came to stop near the victim's oxygen tank. The evidence confirms the director's statement that the, that the detective fired two shots. <laughs> My beautiful contradiction. Gone. All gone. So that bullet hole was from a 38 caliber, huh? I'd better update the record. Very good. Now we are. Now we know the fate of both of the shots Detective Arm fired. Mr. Wright, does that clear up all of your questions? Hmm... Detective Arm fired two warning shots. One hit the holographic display and the other hit the oxygen tank. Does that really clear up everything about what happened at the scene? No, it doesn't. No, Your Honor, it doesn't. Detective Arm fired two warning shots from a 38 caliber gun. That doesn't explain the existence of a certain piece of evidence found at the scene. A piece that points to the existence of a third person. Oh. Very well, but it won't do to keep us waiting, Mr. Wright. What piece of evidence suggests the possibility of a third person at the scene? Take that! And what's this metal pellet supposed to be? Just a little something of great importance we found at the crime scene, Your Honor. You found it where? In a floor gutter at the crime scene. It looks like the police and prosecution both missed it. Furthermore, this is a 10 caliber bullet. Making it much smaller than one of Detective Arm's 38 calibers. Th then that means... Exactly! One more person must have been there in the lounge third person who had a gun that could fire 10 caliber bullets. <laughs> I 
And if that's true, it explains why detective the, 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 the detective Detective Arm fired warning shots. When this third person fired at Detective Arm and Director Cosmos with their gun. And in return, the detective fired her warning shots. Isn't that how it really went down, Director Cosmos? Ah, ah, ah. It looks like you have deduced my miraculous tale of survival. Yes, you're absolutely correct. The mystery person fired upon us. What's this now? What? You never breathed a word of any of this to me before. Ah, ah, ah. Well, all great men have a secret or two, don't you know? Oh yeah, by the way, we were being shot at. Now nah, that's not important enough, apparently. Sir? <laughs> Foolish old geezer. So Director Cosmos really has been hiding the presence of a third person all along. Director Cosmos, I want you to testify to the court about what you really saw. You may be a very great man, but in my courtroom, you are just another witness. You won't receive special treatment here. Now please give accurate testimony. <laughs> Detective Arm and I rushed to the control room together. In the lounge, we saw a figure standing in the middle of the room and turning on the floor. We were still in the control room to the east when the figure fired at us. Hmm, given that there was no third person in the lounge when the witness entered it, does this mean the person who fired the gun had to have been the defendant? Not necessarily. It's still possible that it was someone else. Most likely, as soon as Detective Arm and the Director Cosmos discovered this person, he escaped through the southern door, the one that didn't have a security lock. Objection. Double-edged swords are a tricky lot. Mishandle one, and it is you who is cut down. Huh? Your reasoning could apply if Space Boy were the killer as well. Think about it. After being discovered, he could have fired the 10 caliber gun. Detective Arm would have responded by firing two warning shots. All he had to do was feign unconsciousness, and to invent the possibility of a third person. Objection! But Mr. Starbuck didn't have a gun in his possession when he was found by police. Nor has a gun been found at the crime scene. Its absence can only be explained if there was a, th a third party who took it with them. Objection! Recall the existence of a trash chute in the boarding lounge. The defendant could have simply thrown the gun down the chute. Objection! You can't deny the possibility of a third person leaving with the weapon. Objection. It's up to you to prove that possibility. And I trust you haven't forgotten my little piece of de decisive evidence. Who was an admin in person? <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much for joining again. What evidence? Why, the detonator switch that was found in Mr. Starbuck's pocket, naturally. The most compelling evidence of all that tells us that he is the culprit. I, I did forget all about that. Look, your baldness, how deliciously obvious it is that they lack the evidence to rival mine. How he sliced our third-person theory to ribbons and served it to us. Just like that. I didn't read how it said wow, anyways. Yes, well, I have a question of my own, actually. That bullet that the mysterious figure shot, what did it hit exactly? It hit me. So does that mean you're a uh, uh, g ghost? I was wondering when you would re realize that your baldness. Director Cosmos is an authentic, bona fide ghost. He can even pass through walls. Black Whale, shut the fuck up! <laughs> oh my god. Objection! Prosecutor Black Whale! 
Shame on you for teasing the nice old gentleman. Hm. Your baldness, it was all in jest. Please show yourself again. Uh, are you sure? In that case, how did you manage to survive being shot, Director Cosmos? Ha ha ha, I'm glad you asked. It was a miracle. A miracle befitting a great history-making figure such as myself. The bullet hit my glorious Medal of Honor, whereby it ricocheted, thus saving my life. What? That's unbelievable. I have to check this out. Oh wow! Look at that! There is one extra Gyaxa star. The odds are literally astronomical. I guess it really was a miracle. It's beginning to really feel like the Cosmos is watching out for Director Cosmos. But why did you conceal this information, Director Cosmos? A great man such as myself has to hide things on occasion, no matter how much it hurts. You're in a court of law! <laughs> It's a plight of the truly great. It may be hard for this generation to understand. I don't know, but it sounds fishy to me. What else is he hiding? Let's just cross-examine him and see what we can find out. Now then, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, please. The... Bullets. Objection! <laughs> hey! Director Cosmos, I believe you are telling this great court a glorious lie. A great man like me tell a lie. Have you ever heard of such a thing in all of history? Yes. My accusation is based on the positions of the people who were in the, who were in the lounge. According to your testimony. <laughs> You and Detective Arm were near the control room door. And the mystery figure was standing in the middle of the boarding lounge. As you say, the figure fired a gun at you from this position. And the bullet would have traveled in this direction. However, we found the t 10 caliber bullet here. Whoa. His trajectory and where the bullet was actually found contradict each other. Dr. Cosmos, where were you really when you were being shot at? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a human merry-go-round. Objection! You tell me you've forgotten already. Didn't the witness himself just tell you? The bullet hit his medal. Well, yeah, but it wouldn't just, like, go back in, like, the same way it came from, you know? <laughs> With this, there is no mistake. Objection! But in that case, the bullet should have been found near the east side of the room. Are you trying to say you can explain this inconsistency? Of course. Fuck's sake. I didn't think so. What? Oh, great director Cosmos. Yes? Is there something you'd like for me to is expound upon? You were in fact not in the control room to the east, were you? You were looking into the lounge from the door to the south. Is that not right? What are you getting at? Use your own brain. Your head must have some use other than housing that bird's nest. Bird's nest? Why does everyone pick on my hair? Director Cosmos and the detective witness a scene from the southern door. The killer fired at them there, and that is why the bullet was found in the, in the south. Okay, yeah, that, that, that makes sense, I guess, but like, why lie about it in the first place? <laughs> 
Because suddenly now the the third person doesn't have an escape route, is that why? Ah, that makes sense actually. Also, the witness being at the southern door is rather favorable for the prosecution. Huh? Got a bad feeling about this. How about it, Director? If you don't tell the truth this time... Oh, shoot. Yikes! His handcuffs! It will become but rust upon my sword. I relish the chance to cut down a great man. <laughs> oh, I remember now. Alright, tell the truth. Just put your sword away. You are correct. I, the great Yuri Cosmos, is looking into the room from the southern door. What? That's the complete opposite of all the testimony he's given so far. And now you have lost your possibility that that a third person was in the room. I have? How? The director and the detective were near the southern door. Meaning the killer couldn't have escaped through there. But what about the trash chute? You're the one that brought up the trash chute. I'm just... What about the trash chute? The western door required print recognition. The corridor beyond was filled with smoke. The only escape route left was the eastern control room door. And the only way to get through there was with Director Cosmos's fingerprints. <laughs> In short, there would be no escape for any third person had they been had there been one. <laughs> My third person just disappeared. Like in one of Trucy's magic tricks. Order! Order in the court! Director Cosmos, why did you tell such an outrageous lie? You were covering for the defendant. Isn't that right? Yes, it was all for the love of my men. If I said I was in the Eastern Control Room, it would mean the culprit could have escaped through the southern door. It would have meant that there could have been a third person. All I wanted to do was protect Starbuck. I said I was in the control room to invent an escape route for, for a third person. What a convoluted lie. What was he really covering for the defendant? It looks like we've come to a conclusion. That the defense's argument the possibility of a third person has crumbled. No! <laughs> it's over. Yikes. Judge is about to hand down his verdict. Think, Phoenix. Think. This is the perfect time to try and turn my thinking around. If the third person had no way of escaping the scene, then what if one of the people at the scene was the third person? Wait. What if the whole premise is all wrong? Dr. Cosmo said that he and Detective Arm rushed to the scene together. And what if that premise isn't true? What if one of them reached the scene before the other one? And if that person entered the lounge, and they, and they would be the third person. The defendant is the only one who could have killed the victim and shot at the director. There doesn't appear to be any room for argument against these claims. I will now render my verdict. Objection! Please wait, Your Honor. There is still one possibility. Oh, this had better be good, Mr. Wright. There is one, and only one person who could have escaped from the scene. And that person would be the first person who arrived on the scene. And upon entering the boarding lounge. The second person to arrive came via the southern door. That's why the first person fled from the room. Using an escape route that was accessible only to them. Very well, let's hear more about this the theory. Who is this one person who could have escaped from the boarding lounge? Take that! What? B but that's... Mr. Wright, what are you claiming here? Of all the people who were at the scene, only the witness could have escaped. 
The Vector is the only one with the authority to open the control room door, after all. But that means... Exactly. The true identity of the third person is our current witness. Director Yuri Cosmos! What? Yo, did you see his eyes? That was insane. They just, like, shone red for a moment. Order! Word in the court, I say. Mr. Wright, you will explain yourself in more detail. I assert that Director Cosmos arrived at the scene before Detective Arm. And entered the boarding lounge alone. Detective Arm arrived after that and... Saw a suspicious figure who was actually Director Cosmo standing in the lounge. And that's why she fired these two... Those two warning shots. I've been hit! I've been hit on the starboard side! Captain Wright! It's a direct hit on the enemy ship, sir! A magnificent shot! Warning shots fired from the enemy ship. Prepare to intercept. Cosmos, you have told a lie in this court once again. I've been hit. I've been hit on the port side. The enemy has called in reinforcements. Earth to Cosmos Control Center, requesting permission to ask that you return to reality. Now my ship will not go down to anything less than the ultimate weapon of evidence. Objection! I do have evidence. In fact, you could say that your battleship bears its scar. <laughs> if Director Cosmos is the third person Aura Blackwell saw, this third person fired at Detective Arm and Director Cosmos with their gun. And in return, the detective fired her warning shots. Isn't that how it really went down, Director Cosmos? Ha ha ha! It looks like you've deduced my miraculous tale of survival. Yes, you're absolutely correct. The mystery person fired upon us. Director Cosmos must have been the one who fired the 10 caliber gun. And Detective Arm discovered him in the lounge. It only makes sense that he would have turned and shot at her. Therefore, the evidence on the director's body is of a different kind of relevance than before. Unless we compare it against another piece of evidence. The mark that you received from the third party will be all the proof we need. To prove that you were the one there, in the lounge. Ooh. Race for further impact. Comparison against this piece of evidence will prove that you were the one in the lounge. Take that. The 38 caliber bullet found at the floor on the s at the scene didn't hit the oxygen tank. It hit Director Cosmos's metal. If we have that ricochet mark on the metal analyzed, I'm sure the caliber mark, the caliber will match up. And if that mark proves to be from a 38 caliber bullet, it will prove that you are the third person we've been looking for. Ah, the bridge is destroyed, losing altitude. All hands, abandon ship. Look at him just spinning. What the fuck was that? Oh, actually, I think I know what it was. If that's true, then what about the bullet that hit, hit the oxygen tank? It was the 10 caliber bullet. In other words, it was the bullet fired by Yuri Cosmos. Isn't that right, Director? No, got it all wrong. What? The engines have started again? It's a miracle. I'm not going down yet. Witness, stop this at once and confess the truth. If you don't want the history books to say that a great man was a great liar, then accept your fate and tell the truth. Are you giving me orders? Me, the great director of the Cosmo Space Center? Uh, the cosmos revolves around me! Uh, someone get me off this thing! It spins uncontrollably. Oh my god. Order! Order in the court! And will someone please stop the witness from spinning? He goes brrrr. <laughs> he sure does. Oh, thank goodness we were able to stop him from spinning off the face of the earth. 
While he was twirling, I took the liberty of running an analysis on the mark on the metal. While he was twirling? <laughs> what the fuck? Where did that come from? I mean, good on you, but like... How? It was made by a thirty-eight caliber bullet, matching it with the size of Detective Arm's firearm. Oh. Are you ready to confess the truth, witness? No, you've got it all wrong. This is just a misunderstanding. Is he going to start piling on more lies? It looks like it. No matter how many lies he tells. <laughs> you can't just write garlic bread and stop. I'll just expose them one by one. Make that big liar tell the truth. Sweet. Oh yes, Moon Matrix. Fun, 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 fun. Director Cosmos, a new possibility has been has been presented by the defenses. <laughs> okay, I, I I thought I was gonna sneeze, but I guess not, not properly, anyways. They are claiming that you were this third person. Uh, forgive me, I'm so sorry. So the great pioneer of space development is revealed to be just another fabulous cur. I only have one question for the likes of you. Shall I send you off quickly? Or very quickly? Oh god, he's spinning again. The evidence doesn't lie, Director Cosmos, so don't try to talk your way out of this. Fine, I'll tell the truth. It's all just as you say, Mr. Wright. It's true that I was there in the boarding lounge got there before direct Detective Arm. And when she arrived, she fired warning shots at me. I was afraid people would mistake me for the killer, so I escaped to the control room. And I went past the elevators, and all the way around to boarding lounge one again. Now we can make both at the same time. <laughs> and then went past the elevators. Okay, yeah, I over -read, read that. I came up behind to take the farm and pretended to be the, the second on the scene. What a troublesome old man you are, with such convoluted deeds and thoughts. Hmm, I see. So then. Garlic rolls. Interesting. <laughs> Are you still insisting that you did not kill the victim? Well, of course I am. When I arrived at the lounge alone, I saw the true killer. The great Yuri Cosmos was a history-making witness. Hold it! Now hold on just one moment. We just proved a few minutes ago. But the third person that Mr. Starbuck and Miss Aura Blackwell saw was you. No, it wasn't me. I saw the person as well. If I were the killer, why would I lie to cover for Starbuck? They would just leave him to take the fall. Hmm, that is an excellent point. All I wanted to do was protect, protect Starbuck. Well, I said it, I said I was in the control room to invent an escape route for the third person. Well, it makes some sense if he told those lies to cover for Mr. Starbuck. Still, a lie's a lie, Athena. So Director Cosmos' claim... Cosmo... Mm -hmm. So Director Cosmos claims he's not the culprit, but where's the proof? Huh, I just remembered. <laughs> I have an alibi. You just remembered? Ah, yes. Miss Blackwell said that she saw the killer at 10am, correct? Yes, and? 
and I was on the fourth floor helping with the evacuation effort. Ask any member of the staff you'd like. They'll corroborate me. The director is not fibbing through the court for once. I confirm that he has an alibi for the time specified. So, you're claiming that Miss Blackwell saw the killer commit the crime first at 10 a.m. And that you arrived at the lounge after that. Yes, and I believe the person I saw is the same person that Miss Blackwell saw. Although it was pitch black, so it was more of a shadowy figure and less of a person. And I couldn't actually see their face, but it was definitely the silhouette of an earthling. Hmm, as long as he has an alibi. We can't very well claim Director Cosmos was the killer. No, we can't. And again, maybe we, would, maybe we don't need to yet. I'm wondering if he was really covering for Mr. Starbuck. Your Honor, the defense moves to have the director testify about the person he saw. Hmm, very well. Director Cosmos, your testimony, please. As I tried to enter the lounge, the true killer inside fired, fired a gun at me. I hid to avoid getting shot. But when I tried to get another look, they had vanished into thin air. I was near the elevator side door, and well, the launch pad one door. And the control room door should have been shut tight to the killer. So you were shut up by the killer as well. And then they disappeared? Yes, I thought, though quickly, no harm came to my glorious body. When I really witnessed part 56. <laughs> For real, though. <laughs> Unfortunately, the bullet hit Terran's oxygen tank. I know, because I heard a pang. That must have been the sound of a tank being ruptured. Wait, but I thought the bullet hit this metal. It was Detective R's bullet, remember? Right, what a mess this is turning into. So let's see. Director Cosmos is claiming that when he found Mr. Terran and his killer, the culprit shot a 10 caliber bullet at him. Right, but it actually hit Mr. Terran's oxygen tank and ruptured it. And then the killer disappeared, and the director went into the boarding lounge. When Detective Arm caught up and fired those warning shots at him. Judging by his medal, it looks like one of them almost took him out, too. Good summary, but that doesn't explain where our mystery killer went. Director Cosmos, I was wondering if you could elaborate on when the figure disappeared. I'm ashamed to admit I tried to hide myself when I was shot at, but... When I peeped back into the lounge, the real killer was... gone. I rushed into the lounge straight away to investigate. But what I found was Terran with a knife in his chest and Starbuck out cold on the floor. Hmm. So we have a culprit who vanished from a scene that had no escape route. Vanished without a trace. It's truly like one of the great mysteries of the cosmos. Silence. Hmm. A riddle of the ages indeed. But I'd rather know how a fibbing leech such as you can be lauded as great. Great man is always misunderstood in his own time. But he must remain true to himself, even if those around him don't understand. Wow, that might be the first true statement he's said all day. How do you suppose this person managed to vanish so suddenly? Simple, because it was Space Boy himself. When he was spotted by the director and Aura, he quickly feigned unconsciousness. That would certainly take all the mystery out of the idea of a vanishing culprit. I want to raise an objection, but I don't have any counter evidence. Director Cosmos, when you saw this person, did you also see Mr. Starbuck on the floor? No, because it was as dark as a black hole in there. I didn't see Starbuck until the other person vanished and I entered the room. Hmm, that wasn't exactly helpful. Hmm, I'm prepared to accept your surrender, right, Donald? I can't find any holes in his testimony, but I can't give up. It's all right. Why don't you let me help?
Go get some food. Huh? When the director was giving his testimony, I detected a cacophony of discord. Which means he's hiding his true feelings from us, huh? This just might help us find out what happened to our vanished killer. That'd be great, Athena. Let's see what you can do with him. You got it, boss. I wouldn't want to miss this chance to delve into a great mind. Yuri Cosmos, prepare to hand over the secrets of your heart to me. I tried to enter the lounge. The true killer inside fired a gun at me. I hid to avoid getting shot. And when I tried to get another look, he had vanished into thin air. Wouldn't that be more surprising? It was near the elevator side door. Well, the launch pad one door. And the control room door should have been shut tight to, to the killer. Sweet! You must have thought it was very strange that the killer vanished into thin air. I did. That kind of thing just doesn't happen usually. And yet, at that time, you barely registered any shock at the occurrence. What? Why are you... Mm. I can only think of one reason as to why you weren't surprised by the killer's vanishing act. You must have had a good idea of where they went, isn't that right? What? No, of course not. That's preposterous. Only I can enter the control room. And the area beyond the launch, launch pad door was filled with smoke, making it impassable. And as for the southern door... I was standing right there. So there was no way for the killer to run to. Maybe, or maybe not. You went into the room to check on Mr. Starbuck and Mr. Terran, yes? What if the culprit took what, that opportunity to silently slip out through the southern door? I highly doubt it, as you recall right after I entered the lounge. Detective Arm came rushing toward it herself via the southern hallway. Anyone trying to escape through there would have been caught by her. And yet, the director wasn't surprised the killer vanished. So you're absolutely sure there was no escape route for the culprit to use. <laughs> it's working, boss. One more punch and it'll be a knockout. Me too, I also just ate. There seems to be one more emotion that's at odds with this testimony. Go get him! Okay. Back in the Matrix it is. Time to pinpoint our way to victory. I think I saw them imme immediately. No. Oh god. Here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you seem to be afraid of the launch pad door. Great Yuri Cosmos! Afraid! And what basis do you have for that outlandish accusation? Whether I have any basis or not, you seem quite distressed by it. I'm most certainly not. Director Cosmos, there's something about the launch pad door you're not telling us, isn't there? <laughs> uh. Wow, he's speechless. It looks like you hit the nail on the head, boss. Uh. I'll just input those two pieces of data and... Yes, just what I wanted to see. Presto... Changeo? Let's Discord. It looks like we're on the right track. Thanks, Athena. Now to make sense of what we've learned. Dr. Cosmos wasn't surprised that the culprit suddenly vanished from the lounge. Which points to the possibility that he knew where the killer had escaped to. Furthermore, talking about the door to the launch pad made him uneasy. 
In other words, he's probably hiding something about the launch pad one door. When we put these two pieces together, only one solution to this puzzle comes to mind. Director Cosmos, the real killer escaped through here. Take that! And the culprit went through the launch pad one door to escape, didn't they? Yes, I mean, no. Disaster to starboard, and we're going to crash into an asteroid. Master tactician, are you not? You are not. Damn, I just... I just made some french fries. <laughs> Threw them in the oven and just waited. But the area beyond that door was filled with smoke, wasn't it? True, but this is still the only logical answer there is. We can just figure out what the director is hiding about the launch pad one door. We should be able to iron out the logical inconsistencies. <sighs> that door requires fingerprint recognition. Only Starbuck, Terran, and I have access. I don't see how the killer could have opened the that security lock. Do you? That's an easy one. The killer was right there in the boarding lounge, meaning... There's a way he could have easily gotten past that security lock. Come to think of it, we did, exam we did examine the print in the fingerprint recognition device. I propose that the killer used this person's fingerprints to get past the security lock. Where is he? There he is. Take that! Th that's... Mr. Starbuck was lying unconscious there in the boarding lounge. Anybody could have easily gotten past the security lock by using Mr. Starbuck's prints. And actually, Mr. Starbucks' prints are exactly what we found on the device's screen. It looks like he does have something to hide about the launch pad one door. And I'm betting it's got something to do with the culprit's escape route. But I don't have enough information to see the whole picture yet. You know, something just occurred to me. Would you like to hear it? Huh? Oh yes, by all means. There's the security camera in Boarding Lounge 1. Right, and the one that recorded the victim and the defendant. What about it, Your Honor? If the true culprit escaped into the Launch Pad 1 corridor, then that might be recorded on the security footage as well. Then, the mystery would be solved. What do you think of my logic? Judge is, the judge is so proud of himself. Honestly, good for him. Too bad it's been wiped, or just, no, not wiped, but it's corrupted, something like that, I don't know. I hope you didn't strain your faculties too much for that, your baldness. Can I beg your pardon? Look, if we play the security footage beyond this point. Oh my! The footage cuts off! The camera was running on backup power, but apparently the power cables were damaged. Most likely by the after effects of the explosion. There was no footage after this, be it of criminals or space aliens. Hmm, and I thought I, it was such a good idea too. Hmm, just because your grandchild is watching from the gallery. It doesn't mean you should try to show off too much. Grandpa Baldness. Prosecutor Blackwell, how did you know about my grandchild? I think his grandchild just learned a little about the harshness of, of the adult world. Huh. Setting aside the issue of grandchildren, I'd like to have the witness continue. Director Cosmos, could you tell us more about when you entered the lounge? Mm -hmm. uh. If I... I must... I had to avoid getting shot. After the killer vanished, I went into the lounge. But that's when Detective Arm appeared from the elevator side door. And then, the detective shot at me. You see, the killer could have only escaped to the launch pad, right? Oh, God.
Look. He's so surprised that Detective Arm shows up, but he's not rather surprised that, that he's being shot. Oh my god, it was that. I mean, I'm not very good at this feature. Also, me nails every single one. Wait, actually, I got one. I got it one wrong, like, once. Director Cosmos. Why were you so surprised when Detective Arm found you? And again, when she fired. Isn't that a bit unnatural? Sadly, even great men such as myself have ordinary human feelings. Our bodies are bound by the forces of gravity and emotions. Even a great man such as myself experiences surprise on occasion. Um, yes, I'm sure you do. My real point is not the fact that you were surprised, but rather what you were surprised by. Pardon me? First, you were surprised when Detective Arm found you in the lounge. And just after that, you were of course again surprised when she shot at you. But considering what you were surprised about, a strange phenomenon occurs here. Director Cosmos, what is strange about your surprise reaction is the fact that you were... Sure you were surprised when Detective Arm shot at you. But the surprise you felt when she found you in the lounge was much greater. The fact that you were more surprised by simply being found than by being shot at. Suggests to me that you were conflicted about whether, whatever it was you were doing there. The enemy has acquired a new, a new weapon. Commence operation. Hide under your desk. Ah! Please tell me I finally sunk his battleship. Plus, I'm getting less discord now. That must mean... He really is hiding something about that launch pad door. Wrong game? Wait. Ah. <laughs> Whatever he's hiding most likely has something to do with the killer's escape. I wonder what it could be. He was doing something suspicious around that door. Maybe we can spot some change between before and before it came to the room and after. Detective Fulbright gave us a photo taken after the crime. Let's run a comparison. Let's see. This is footage of the door before before Director Cosmos arrived. And this is how the door looked after the director entered the lounge. And look at that. There is a change. Something is definitely different. Director Cosmos. What is it? What have you two been up to over there? Finding the answer to what you were doing when Detective Arm found you, that's one. And that answer lies clearly in this footage. All we have to do is compare it to the photo that was taken during the investigation. You're ridiculous. If you really have an answer, you'd have pointed it out already. He's asking for it. This is what changed directly after the incident. The answer is this knob. That's... Your Honor, please take a look at this footage. Hmm, let's see. Take a look at the knob next to the launch pad door. As you can see, it's horizontal. Yes, it is, isn't it? However... When we investigated the scene of the crime yesterday, the knob was vertical. Hmm, and what does that mean? It means that sometime be between before the director arrived and after. Someone turned this knob. Ah! After the scene was discovered, you were the only one who could have turned the knob. Is that gonna work? Well, I have it. I have theory. Eh. That's not even centered, whatever. 
Oh no, that's even worse. Maybe? I don't know. Let's try that. I was thinking if I use like bobby pins, then I could just like spread like the uh, the impact area so that it doesn't like dig into my scalp all the time, like my headphones, because it hurts so much. And right now it's it's fine. I don't think I put it far enough back though. It seems actually to be, to be working miraculously. <laughs> After the scene was discovered, you were the only one who could have turned the knob. Come on now, Director Cosmos. Let's hear what you have to say. What were you trying to do by turning that knob by the door? Fine. I admit it. You're right. I did turn that knob. Oh. That sucks. Knob is a safety lock meant to keep the la launch pad in place. I was afraid there would be more explosions. So I wanted to move the launch pad away. You wanted to do what? Hey, didn't Panko tell us something about how they prepare for launch? She said that once the launch pad's fully assembled, it's moved to the launch site. Safety lock in the boarding lounge has to be disengaged first. I guess that clears up what that knob is for. Oh, so if the killer escaped into the launch pad one corridor, maybe they were transported along with the launch pad to the launch site. I don't think so. The launch pad one corridor was filled with smoke. I don't think they could have escaped through that corridor. So then where did the killer escape to? I guess there are, there are still some things we have to uncover. Dr. Cosmos, I request that you tell us about moving the launch pad in more detail. Fine, but listen carefully, for I'm about to give history-making testimony. I have no choice but to disengage the safety lock. Happiness? Okay. I feared there might be more explosions. I had to cut the launch pad. So I had to cut the launch pad loose. Surely the only escape the killer had was through the through launch pad one. But that area was a sea of smoke. Found it. Where on earth could they have gone? choice but to disengage the safety lock. You make it sound like you were reluctant to do so. And yet, when you did it, you felt some joy. As if you were very pleased with yourself. How do you do it? How do you know everything as if you were there? Pretty impressive, isn't it? This is the power of analytical psychology. So, care to explain why you felt joy when you disengaged the safety lock? When I think back on the facts we discovered up to this point, I have to believe that you were trying to fulfill some hidden agenda. How do you know about that too? Because I'm more or less a pro. I'm guessing. But you have no proof that I had a hidden agenda. And even if I did, I would never ever tell you. So there. I know they say people regress as they grow older, but you, sir, take the cake. And how could you doubt a man with such great intensity, intelligence, and integrity? Silence. You, a man of integrity, don't make me laugh. Prosecutor Blackwell? What came over him all of a sudden? You've spouted nothing but falsity since you stepped up to the stand. You're not the kind of man that will be glorified in the annals of history. Not for greatness, anyway. Unless you consider great as barefaced liar for an honor. Liar! Mm -hmm. His words bite harder than his blade. You moved Launchpad 1 after the explosions. 
My, how naive you are. You fail to realize how even the facts themselves have betrayed you. No. Just a thought, but modern English can be your friend. And here's a thought for you, immediately following the bombing. Launch pad 1 was on the boarding lounge one site. Police confirmed this on scene. What? Liar! So that means the director didn't move the launch pad? Curse my judgment for calling history's greatest liar to the witness stand. Let us leave him to indulge in his lies and war games to his heart's content. He's still upset about being called a liar. But it doesn't make sense. You can't deny that someone turned that knob. Once the safety lock was released, I'm sure the pad must have went somewhere. If we chase down the truth of this issue, we just might find where the killer escaped to. Yeah. You're sure it must have went somewhere. We just might find out. Your arguments are nothing but conjecture, bluffing, and wishful thinking. Stop chasing your fantasies and see reality for what it really is. Or are you not mad enough to... Boy. Ah. Talk about hitting below the belt. Young ones these days. I don't understand it. I'm sure Director Cosmos must have moved the launch pad. The knob was definitely turned after he came to the lounge. Liar, liar, spaceships on fire. The launch pad is right where it's supposed to be. Ah. Wait a minute. Maybe I have it all backwards. What if the director turned the knob not to move the launch pad away, but to bring it back to where it was supposed to be? What are you blathering about? What if the launch pad was at the launch site before the incident? And then after the incident? Director Cosmos moved it back to its usual spot. All he had to do was turn the knob to call the launch pad back. And he would be right where the police found it. Ugh. Aww. You made him sigh like Mr. Starbuck. Was what I said really that off base? It pains me to have to explain how wrong your own logic is to you. However, our great liar turned the knob only after he discovered the crime scene. Indeed, the pad existed beyond beyond the lounge when our astro wanderers made their escape. A fact that has been recorded for posterity on filmless filmless film. Alright. So to reiterate. Stop chasing your fantasies and see reality for what it really is, boy. Oh boy. Get a grip, Mr. Wright, and focus. We know the launch pad must have been moved. There are deductions that the actual facts of the case are in direct contradiction to each other. Well, maybe the two astronauts never actually boarded the rockets. This footage could be fake, taken with body doubles after the incident or something. On second thought, that's too far-fetched, even for me. Never actually boarded the rockets. Wait a minute. Maybe. Just maybe. Huh? Prosecutor Blackwell, what if I told you that the two astronauts never set foot inside the launch pad area, but instead went into another place? And what if when the director moved launch pad one back, it was not from the launch site, but from another place? What would you say then? Cut the existential bull or I'll cut you. Mr. Wright, you will explain yourself at once. I know I'm right. It was all the other way around from the beginning. Hey, well, Your Honor, let me explain. Director Cosmos's reason for moving Launchpad 1 was... ...to switch it with another place. Because he wanted to switch it with another- with some other place. I'm sorry, but... Did you say switch it? But... What could he possibly have switched a launch pad with? Oh, you'll be surprised, Your Honor. All it takes is a little thinking outside the box, and the answer becomes clear as day. This is what was switched with launch pad 1. 
launch pad one was switched with the space museum. In the past, the space museum used to be launch pad two. It has all all the same features as launch pad one and can even be moved to the launch site. Meaning the space museum and launch pad one can also be switched with each other. You can't mean. The rocket the astronauts boarded was not the one in launch pad one. It was the one in the space museum. What? Boulder Dash. And yet, it's the only explanation that accounts for every riddle and inconsistency. This is how the space center was just before the incident. Interesting. I see Launch Pad 1 and the Space Museum have already switched places. That's right. And when the two switched like this, the astronauts entered the Space Museum from Boarding Lounge 1. This allowed the true killer to enter Launch Pad 1 from Boarding Lounge 2. And set the bomb on the rocket. Come to think of it, the door to the Space Museum on from Boarding Lounge 2. Welcome, welcome. The Space Museum is open to the public every day of the year from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Exactly. Anyone could pass through the door to the Space Museum. There is no fingerprint recognition system on that door. In other words, when the two launch pads switched like that, someone other than Mr. Starbuck could have easily planted that bomb. After setting the bomb on the rocket, the culprit snuck into boarding lounge one and waited there, concealed. In order to kill Mr. Terran when the two astronauts emerged from the space museum. But why did they... Recall that Miss Blackwell, Mr. Starbuck and the director all saw a suspicious figure. Who we can suppose after killing Mr. Terran. Made their escape into the space museum. After that, Director Cosmo switched the two launch pads back, without realizing the killer was inside the space museum. The killer then left the space museum and made a clean getaway. Right, Donna. See you know how to handle a sword. And handle it well. Perhaps I should call you Swordmaster Bluff. A seasoned warrior who has cut down many a prosecutor. Silence. But unless you can prove your theory, it's no better than a rusty sword. That's right. You have no proof I switched the launch pads. Somebody needs a. <laughs> Sorry, I really would. Somebody must have told me. Sorry, somebody needs a better anger management counselor. If the launch pads really were switched, there might be a record of it somewhere. At this point, launch pad one and the space museum were switched with each other. But why was he hurt in there? That's what I want to know. Or like something obviously happened in there. So the corridor beyond the door should be the one that belongs to the space museum. Let's see, this is an image of the launch pad 1 corridor. Do you see anything different when we compare it to the security footage? Huh? A number on the floor. Well, what do you know? It looks like we have a proof we have proof after all, Prosecutor Blackwell. We do? Oh, we do! <laughs> And if this is just another bluff? Oh, no worry. It's all right here. Right in this footage. Proof that beyond this door is the corridor to the space museum. Very well then. Answer this for me if you would. What in this footage proves that the corridor belongs to the space museum? Take that! There's a one on the floor in the launch pad one corridor. But take a look at the floor of the cor corridor in the security footage. Do you see the number on the floor behind the astronauts? It doesn't look like a one, does it? That's because what you see is actually part of a two. What? Why is it a two and not a one? It's because the corridor you see in 
is the one to the space museum. Ugh. So that means the corridor in this footage was not filled with smoke. That's right, because the explosion didn't occur in the space museum. The explosion occurred in launch pad one on the side opposite opposite the space museum. But now that we know the two astronauts escaped from the space museum, the mystery from the previous trial of how they got down the ladder is cleared up. Mr. Terran carrying Mr. Starbuck simply took the elevator from the upper level down to the middle level. Just incredible. The two launch pads were actually switched. But you would think someone would have noticed an, an event of this magnitude. Everyone was down in the basement shelter when the launch pads were swapped back. There's no way anyone could have known that what was happening on the surface. But the fact that they didn't realize that they were in the museum. <laughs> Director Cosmos. It's high time. You told us the truth. <sighs> my honor, my glory, everything is slipping away. I need to play my ultimate weapon Galactic Engine Ignition. What? It's gone haywire. Oh boy, it won't stop. My stars, my glory. Oh my god. Not that way! Bailiff, on your steed and after that witness. Oh, they fixed the door. <laughs> Replacement doors. Hmm. I see we managed to retrieve you before you came to any bodily harm. Director Cosmos, do you admit you switched the launch pads? Mm -hmm. I admit it's true. I switched launch pad one for the space museum. Ah, it's good to hear words I can believe for a change. Before you do, Your Honor, two things. First, we don't know if Mr. Terran had prior knowledge of the switch. As for Mr. Starbuck, he was unaware of his surroundings thanks to his medication. Either way, Mr. Terran would have realized the instant he stepped into the Space Museum. And it had been switched with the, with Launchpad 1. So my first question is, if the Space Museum was perfectly fine, why did Mr. Terran feel the need to put on such a dramatic display? As for my second question, I'd like Director Cosmos to tell us. Why he switched the two launch pads to begin with? Mm -hmm. Please, I can't. I, I exercise my right to remain silent. But I will say my hands were tied. I was only doing what I could to keep my men from getting caught in that blast. Mm -hmm. The director is terrified. He must have one heck of a reason for not wanting to explain why. Probably not a good time to pry it out of him, huh? Excuse me, but do you mind if I picked up my stars? Without my badge of rank, I'm nothing. I don't see why not. Bailiff, help the director retrieve his stars. It appears the possibility of a culprit other than the defendant has presented itself. Mr. Starbuck, is there anything you wish to say? I don't get it. Don't get it? What don't you get? Director, why did you do all that? From the very beginning, you never meant for the launch to go ahead, did you? You... You tricked us! Mr. Starbuck. Starbuck, my boy, I'm sorry. I can't tell you the reason why. But I had to do it to protect the Space Center. Director! Will I... Will I ever get the chance to go into space again?
Yes, yes, of course. I won't rest until it happens. I will get you into space again, my boy. And the dream is still alive. Silence. It was already quite quiet, but okay. Hmm. So we're not going into space, Starbuck. But prison. I won't have it any other way. Why are you so hung up on him? Yes, I accept that the launch pads really were switched. And if there were a third person at the scene, I suppose they could have escaped. But I have yet to see proof of this third person's escape via the Space Museum. Ah, and that's a good point. Ah, he's right. I don't have any proof. Starbuck, you will spill everything you know. What? Me? Uh... Where did you get those bombs? Tell me now. If you don't, my blade shall feast on your blood. Uh... If I'm going to die, I want to die in space. I, I have to do something. Solomon Starbuck, prepare yourself. Ha 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 Now, now, you know violence isn't the answer, Prosecutor Blackwell. <laughs> that annoying, cheerful laugh. It can be one none other than... Champion of Righteousness, Bobby Fulbright, here! In Justice We Trust! Detective Fulbright? Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Lawyer. I hope I'm not too late. I don't believe we had an appointment. I tried to hurry, but I ended up helping a little old lady cross the street. And then I had to break up a catfight. I tell you, justice sure is a full-time job. Was it a fight between cats, or...? <clears throat> Why are you here again? Because their defendant is the culprit. And I came to make sure that justice is served. Uh... I don't have any idea what you're talking about. Fulbright. I always thought you were a bit touched in the head. But have you finally succumbed? Nope. It looks like you've succumbed to this phantom of yours. Open your eyes and let the evidence of justice... And uncloud your judgment. What evidence? Come to think of it, he did say something about finding finding us some evidence. Thanks, you two. I feel a lot better now that I've been able to get that off my chest. I'm going to work extra hard to find that perfect piece of evidence for you. I didn't think he was serious, though. So what is it, Detective? Is it something that will prove Mr. Starbuck innocent? It is indeed. Have a look at this. What's this? A lighter? That's right. A lighter thought to have been used by the culprit, no less. The Space Museum's cleaning robot picked it up. It has the victim Clay Terran's blood, along with this killer's fingerprints on it. What? And I assume they're not Solomon's, so... assume that the fingerprints don't belong to the defendant? You bet. Mr. Starbuck is totally innocent. This is it. This is just what I needed. Your Honor, this is decisive evidence that supports the defense's early earlier claim. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. With pleasure, Your Honor. Recall where this lighter was found. Based on that, we can extrapolate that after the killer murdered Mr. Terran, they escaped with lighter in hand into the Space Museum, where they dropped it. The switching of the two launch pads occurred. And finally, the killer left through Boarding Lounge 2 and made their escape. Meanwhile, Mr. Starbuck was found in Boarding Lounge 1 after the murder. A 
fact that Director Cosmos has testified to. Therefore, Mr. Starbuck couldn't have possibly been the one to drop the lighter there. Silence. Ah, but the defendant had free reign of the area until Director Cosmos appeared. Could he not have dropped the lighter in the Space Museum during that span of time? Objection. You'd like that to be true, wouldn't you? But Director Cosmos testified that right after he saw the mysterious figure with the lighter. He went into the lounge and found the unconscious Mr. Starbuck. In other words, Mr. Starbuck wouldn't have had the time to double back to the museum. No. Prosecutor Blackwell, this lighter could only have been dropped by the real killer. <laughs> Most importantly, Mr. Starbuck's fingerprints were nowhere to be found on this lighter. I think you understand what this means, don't you? This piece of evidence un unequivocally uh, proves that Mr. Starbucks wasn't the culprit. <laughs> this does indeed appear to be decisive evidence that proves the defense's claims. As for the remote switch that was found in Mr. Starbucks's pocket, Starbucks's Starbucks pockets. We can assume it was planted by the killer on the unconscious Mr. Starbuck. No. There must be some mistake. Frankly, Prosecutor Blackwell, I've been worried about you. You've been chasing this phantom for seven whole years. I understand your urgency because tomorrow. Silence. Fulbright, you promised never to speak of that. Huh? Tomorrow? What about tomorrow? Given the body of evidence, I think it's safe to say the defendant is innocent. In light of the fact that it was impossible for him to have committed the crime, a few unanswered questions remain, so I look forward to seeing what you two uncover. But for now, this court finds the defendant Solomon Starbuck. Yay. The demons are back! Hell yeah! I miss them. I feel right at home right now. <laughs> yes, we did it, Mr. Wright! Looks like we pulled it off somehow, huh? With some help from Detective Fulbright. Mr. Wright, Miss Sykes. Thank you, and please thank Apollo for me, too. You all are the best. Oh, I wish I could tell Apollo about Mr. Starbuck's verdict right now. Yeah, me too. That's going to have to wait. Now that the verdict has been reached, I'd like to bring today's trial to a close. Court is adjourned. Objection! It's too late to object, isn't it? Simply isn't possible. Something's wrong. Prosecutor Blackwell, are you dissatisfied with the verdict? Fulbright. What were the results of the fingerprint analysis for the lighter? Huh? And the results? Ha 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 well, I was in a hurry, you see. And then there was that cat fight, and, uh, well... I kinda got carried away when I heard the prints weren't Mr. Starbucks, so... You have yet to read it. Prosecutor Blackwell, can you read out who the prints belong to? Upon thorough analysis, the fingerprints... were found to belong to Athena Sykes. So says the report. What? What? Huh? M me Plot twist. Damn. My order, I say. What? Miss Sykes, tell me you have an explanation for this. We just finished proving that this lighter could only belong to the killer. So finding your prints on it can only lead us to one grave conclusion. I, I don't know how they got on there, but I know I'm not the culprit. 
The demons are in uproar, oh for sure. This can't be happening. We built up our argument piece by piece, and I don't think any of our reasoning was faulty. So how could it have led to this? That's why they're back to drama. What have I done? Please forgive me, I'm sorry. Martyr, martyr! Detective Fulbright, stop your crying. What in the world is happening here? It's like the world's gone mad. Order, order! I will have order! It went down to like 70%. <laughs> Confusion spiraled into utter chaos. After all we'd fought for, the truth had turned cruelly on us to accuse Athena of the crimes. Well, it's down at 70% now. I can't really do anything about it. Somewhere, somehow, everything had gone terribly wrong. We had stumbled over the edge of reason and into the jaws of a twisted darkness. That was that episode. We're not even two hours in. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna do the other one too. I said I wasn't gonna do it, but... <laughs> That went by way too fast, and I don't want to end it just now. Or just yet, anyways. Okay. Video? Nope. One can escape their past. I guess yes. The sins we've committed and the sadness we've caused. No matter how far we run, our past remains, as ever-present as the moon in the sky. What did it go down to 8 frames per second?! <laughs> oh boy! Hold on, I think I may have something that can fix it. Not quite. Okay, I guess not. We'll just have to deal with it. <laughs> Dramatic slow mo. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Five percent. Here we go. It looms in wait for the day when we are forced to face it. But only in doing so can we truly make peace and move on in hope towards tomorrow. took Athena from the courtroom, straight to the station. 
she's probably being questioned at this very moment. After this past year, I took it for granted that those two would always be here. But now Apollo has gone off on his, on his own to seek his own truth. And my pursuit of the truth only ended up with Athena becoming the new suspect. <laughs> Does anyone know Chicken Little? <laughs> the sky is falling down? Uh, yeah. Some boss I turned out to be. It's even quieter in here than usual. Yeah, it seems so empty too. I just don't get it, Daddy. All of your reasoning during the trial seemed perfectly solid. Yeah, and I still believe it was. At least based on what we know. Oh, holy shit, this is long. That's fine. I'll at least do this part. But now, Athena's the one who's being accused. During the trial for the bombing and murder that occurred at the Cosmo Space Center. The lighter used by the real culprit was found. This lighter proved the defendant, Solomon Starbuck, innocent. But Athena's prints were found on it instead. And she was subsequently arrested for the murder. But Athena couldn't have done it. It just doesn't make any sense. No, none of it does. I've been rocking my brain. Racking my brain, but I just can't figure it out. Ugh, where is the flaw in my reasoning? What have I got wrong in this case? You know, Daddy? If Athena was here, she wouldn't just be sitting around thinking sh thinking she'd be out there doing something. You are going to defend Athena, right, Daddy? Of course I will. And thanks, Trucy. I needed that push. Trucy's right. The trial is tomorrow. There's no time to waste. I'm going to prove Athena's innocence. I better get out there and find some evidence. Off we go then. We're on a hunt for evidence that'll prove Athena's innocence. Ray. Before we go, I'd better tidy up the evidence I have on hand. Athena is probably still in the middle of being questioned. So Trucy's right. The thing to start with is talking to people at the Space Center. No, not talk. Move. Director Cosmos, do you have a minute? <laughs> Galactic Scooter, full speed ahead! Director, he scooted away. His expression changed the instant, he's, in the instant he saw you, Daddy. Yeah, well, I dragged his name through the mud pretty good at the trial earlier today. Boarding lounge. We were here only yesterday. Oh, hey. Mr. Starbuck, you've been released, huh? Yep, and I came straight here. This is all thanks to you and your team, Mr. Wright. You've given me a second chance to fly into space again. I can't thank you enough. Except... Uh... <laughs> Shut up. It's probably true, though. Knowing this fucking game. What's wrong? I thought he'd be happy to be acquitted. As I was coming out of the detention center, I saw Miss Sykes. He saw Athena? I was at a loss for words. I didn't know what to say to the poor girl. And then, you know what? She flashed a peace sign at me. Congratulations on your acquittal, she said. Now you can go back into space someday. Athena. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Athena. I can just picture it. 
But I saw her eyes. They were red and swollen from crying. She's gotta be suffering. She must be so worried. And yet she went out of her way to be nice and give me that big smile. She held back her own tears so she could give someone else a smile. That's so Athena. There's no question about it. The girl's innocent. Please, Mr. Wright. You have to make sure she goes free. And then, they can put me in prison instead. I don't mind. We can't have that either, Mr. Starbuck. Don't worry, Mr. Starbuck. I'm going to give her the very best defense I can. I promise to get her acquitted. Just like I did for you. I know she'll be alright with you in her corner. I know you'll never give up on her. Paolo has a fine boss to look up to. I still can't believe Launchpad 1 was switched with the Space Museum. What could have made Director Cosmos do such a thing? I haven't the foggiest idea. Aww. So there never was gonna be a launch that day. Not from the very beginning. I wonder if Clay knew. I imagine he must have. Surely he would have noticed when you went to board the rocket. It's pathetic to think I was the only one who got taken in. Aww. But I guess that's about how it goes when you're worth less than space debris. Is he going to be alright, Daddy? His expression looks as dark as a black hole. Well, that's just how he is. Depressed. Mr. Starbuck, do you remember anything about the murderer? Really, I only saw a shadowy figure in the dark after all. Yeah, I guess that was a little too much to hope for. Hey, I thought I heard something from the police though. They said they never did find a 10 caliber gun down the trash chute. Just as I thought, the culprit must have carried it away with them when they escaped. So, was the person you saw holding a gun, Mr. Starbuck? Um, I couldn't really tell. But it wasn't Athena, right? Could you tell if the person was male or female, tall or short? I, I can't even tell you that much, man. I'm useless. When the culprit opened the door and some light came in, I should have been able to see. The door. Ah, yes! As I recall, they opened this door here as they made their escape. Door to launch pad one, right? Yeah, except right now the door leads to the space museum. You mean the launch pad and the space museum are switched right now? Yeah, they're trying to investigate the theory you came up with in court. So they're recreating the conditions, huh? I'd like to see what's beyond the door now. Mr. Starbuck, could you open this door for us? Sure, just let me have my print scanned here. Launch pads get switched back and forth a lot. Well, back when the Space Museum was Launch Pad 2, they used to switch the pads around at times. But these days, Launch Pad 2 is only used as a tourist attraction, right? Right. Because quite frankly, the Space Center needs the money. I hear you. I'm sure are tough. Hold on, I'm. Ah, okay, I see. Sorry, I just... <laughs> did some reading. Patty, Let's go and check out what's beyond that door! Sure, let's go. Hey, why don't I come along? I can show you around. Huh? I wonder what these dead leaves are doing here. Maybe they were stuck to the bottom of somebody's shoes. There are a lot of tr there are lots of trees around the space center. She's right. It's a modern state-of-the-art building, but it's surrounded by trees. And I don't know. If they were stuck to the bottom of somebody's shoes. Wouldn't they look more crushed up? These don't look like they've been stepped on. Maybe there's some kind of secret hatch in the corridor, and they came in that way. 
Not everything is set up like a magician stage, you know? So this is another one of those devices for opening the door, huh? Yep, this one doesn't require fingerprint verification. You just hit the button and, op and open Sesame. So when you and Clay went through here, you didn't need to show your prints either. That's right, Trucy. Just like how the culprit didn't need to scan their prints. When they escaped back out of the Space Museum corridor into Boarding Lounge 2. I don't see anything else that jumps out at me. I imagine this corridor is built exactly like the Launchpad 1 corridor. Curse the retro solid, my good name. Reverse course and full speed away. Director Cosmos, wait! I'll handle this, Daddy. Take that! No! The mobility system has been compromised. Trucy's knife throw was a direct hit to one of his tires. Trucy, what the fuck? And the streak continues. Streak. Maybe I should have kept a closer watch on what tricks she's been practicing. My dear old battleship, we fought many a skirmish together. It has been an honor. Daddy, he's going to blow that thing up! Uh, I bet, I bet all that button will do is make it go haywire again. No worries. Very well, I surrender. As a prisoner of war, I expect to be treated honorably. Director Cosmos, when you were talking in court about switching the launch pads, you used your right to remain silent about the reason as to why. I'd like Director Cosmos to tell us why he switched the two launch pads to begin with. <laughs> Please, I can't. I, I exercise my right to remain silent. But I will say my hands were tied. I was only doing what I could to keep my men from getting caught in that blast. Mm. Mm. The center of the cosmos is shrouded in a mystery, but I don't have any secrets left. Now that my battleship has been destroyed and I've been taken prisoner. No secrets left, huh? I beg to differ. Looks like I'll have to undo his psych locks if I want to get to the bottom of this. I still don't know if it's Psyche or Psyche. Do I do them now? Yeah. Take that! And I want you to tell me everything you're hiding about the switching of the two launch pads. I refuse. You can't make me. I can hold out longer than anyone. I hope I never get like this when I'm old. Now let's see. Where to start? This is how you explain your motive for switching the launch pads. You did it to save the astronauts. You see, you're switching the la launch pads. The astronauts escaped injury from the blast. Instead, they safely boarded the museum's rocket far away from the actual explosion. Hmm. My astronauts were raring to go out on an authentic adventure in space. How do you propose I had them board a fake rocket without them noticing? I agree. You couldn't have done it without help. For one, you would have figured it out the instant they stepped into the Space Museum. You figured you could fool Mr. Starbuck once he had been drugged with his medication, but... Without the help of this person, it would have been impossible to pull your plan off. Take that! You must have gotten Mr. Terran to help you. <laughs> he stole the tranquilizers from his mentor's locker and slipped them to him. And then, with Mr. Starbuck in a daze, they boarded the replica rocket in the museum. Someone please help this poor prisoner of war! How is he able to spin around like that? If you really wanted to save the astronauts' lives, shouldn't you have just called off the launch? If I could have done that, do you think I would have gone to all that trouble? I guess I must have had a compelling reason why I couldn't call it off. And how did you know to switch the pads in advance of the bombing incident? Well, that's because... <laughs> was warned in advance. 
Once I received that warning, it was my duty to ensure my astronaut's safety. If it was just a warning, it could, have, could even have been a prank. Why did you believe in it so completely? Because I went to one of those mediums that everyone's talking about these days. Oh, I didn't realize channeling was back in vogue. Besides, I thought it was you yourself that got the warning via telephone. Yes, that's right. The bomber contacted me personally. My battleship is equipped with a special advanced communication system, you see. AKA a regular old telephone. It's been a while. Planning another launch? I see you haven't learned. I'll never forget the terror I felt when I received that call. The bomber said it's been a while. And that was enough to make you take the threat seriously. Perhaps Director Cosmos took the threat so seriously. Because the Space Center had been involved in the bombing once before. Maybe... The culprit in the current case is the same person who was involved in this incident. I had one miracle? I had one miracle. That epic story of survival. People across the nation know, of, know it now as a heroic tale, heroic tale of bravery. But in truth, it was an act of sabotage perpetrated by our current killer, wasn't it? Very few knew about the previous plot, so when the caller said it's been a while, you knew beyond a shadow of doubt that the danger was real and it wasn't a prank. Did anyone ever tell you to go easy on an next serviceman Yes, the Hat One Miracle was really a desperate battle against an act of sabotage. I even lost the life of one of my staff, staff members in the, in the fight. Sabotage. Murder. So this is the ugly truth behind the Hat One Miracle. I let my guard down. I thought the saboteur had been caught, and that the case was closed. Huh? Wait a minute. The murder at the Space Center seven years ago. This must be the person Director Cosmos thought was the culprit. Take that! Simon Blackwell. The murder suspect in a case that happened here seven years ago. The place and time of the two incidents. The murder and the sabotage were the same. So you thought that he committed both crimes. And while Prosecutor Blackwell was behind bars, you got another threatening call. If the culprit this time is the same as seven years ago, then it isn't Simon Blackwell. Realizing that, you were shaken. It meant the true culprit's been running free all this time. <laughs> what do you even- how do you keep seeing straight through me? The reason why Director Cosmos won't talk about why he switched the launch pads is connected to the truth behind the Hat One miracle. The sabotage and murder that happened at the, the Space Center seven years ago. Director Cosmos, tell us what you're hiding. If you really want to understand the reason I decided to switch the launch pads. We'll have to start with the story of that horrible nightmare from seven years ago. Seven years ago? You mean the so-called Hat One miracle? The launch went smoothly, but once the ship entered outer, sp outer space, the trouble then the troubles began. It was all the handiwork of a certain person and their evil scheme. So Mr. Starbuck's traumatic experience wasn't accidental. Not only that, but before the launch, a very valuable piece of moon rock was stolen. But that wasn't the worst of it. One of my staff members was murdered. Wow, I had no idea such awful event events were behind that exciting story of space heroism. All that, in spite of the Space Center having very strict security in those days. All personal effects were examined thoroughly, coming or going. You couldn't even smuggle a withered old leaf through those checkpoints. So, do you have any clue who was responsible for the sabotage? At the very least, I know it wasn't Simon Blackwell. I don't know enough to identify the true culprit, but it's clear what that person is. To put it simply, 
A spy. A spy? You mean somebody who infiltrates a foreign country? Carries out dangerous missions? And always gets the girl? Someone's watching way too many late night movies. Well, I guess if we're talking about blowing up a rocket and stealing research material, it's not all that surprising that a spy could be behind it all. Make no mistake, there's cutthroat rivalry between nations and the space R&D race. Don't try to outdo others by any means possible, even deliberate obstruction. Seven years ago, we got a call before the launch warning us of sabotage. Oh my god, you have to let us know too. <laughs> Same MO as this time. Yes, and here I thought the perpetrator had been caught. Also, you have to show me pictures. Yes, and here I thought the perpetrator had been caught, but it looks like I was wrong. Hasekiro Blackquill seems more like a ninja than a spy, don't you think? Aren't ninjas and spies basically the same thing? But there's a good reason we failed to find the real spy. A massive cover-up by the government. Government officials were too embarrassed to admit that they had allowed such a thing to happen at the hands of a spy. Don't tell me they made the police rush the investigation. They did indeed. And then, to cover up the sabotage, they cleaned up the story. And that was the Hat One miracle, wasn't it? But then, seven years later, the same MO advanced warning of, it, of sabotage. That must have been the director's reason for switching the launch pads. Seven years ago, the spy gave you advance warning of their plans, just like this time. Meh. Oh, boy. Okay. Interesting. Damn. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Just like this time. That was what made you decide to switch the launch pads, wasn't it? That's right. The caller knew the facts of the case seven years ago, despite the cover-up. They knew about the sabotage, the moon rock, the murder, and they said, You don't want things to go like they did seven years ago, do you? They immediately thought of calling off the launch, but the government wouldn't let me. We don't give in to the likes of terrorists. We must proceed for our country's honor. Okay. It was quite a moving speech, actually. Moving? Really? Maybe if you're easily inspired by political talking points. But I knew the truth. We had been warned, which meant that the danger was very real. And so this is America! <laughs> and I knew there was no way to stop the spy. No matter what I did, they would find a way. That's why I switched the launch pads and staged the moving rescue scene. First, I snuck into the center the night before and switched the launch, launch pads. That way, the astronauts would go from boarding lounge 1 to the space museum. Then, I put a closed for repair sign at the door to launch pad 1 in boarding lounge 2. You did that so normal visitors wouldn't enter, right? What else did you do? I enlisted the help of several staff members, including Terran. You didn't let Mr. Starbuck in on it. He'd already been through enough. And he's no good at lying to keep a secret. I'm afraid I had no choice but to have him drugged. And my plan went well until... He's murder, huh? After the culprit made their escape, I switched the launch pads back. I did it in such a way that no one would find out. But after all that effort... Terran is dead, and the hat too is destroyed. And the hope capsule, which had returned to us only recently, was also lost in the blast. My home, the center of the cosmos, 
My beautiful Cosmo Space Center is done for. Wait, what did he mean by the hope capsule was lost in that blast? I thought that the hope capsule was found at the crime scene with Mr. Terran. It had just been brought back by the hope space pro probe with asteroid samples inside. So what kind of samples are they? What's in them? Samples are scheduled for analysis in the near future. We haven't had time since they just came back the day before Terran's murder. The capture was being held in a safe launch in a safe in launch pad one. But I gave it to Terran before the incident so it wouldn't be destroyed in the explosion. The idea was that with it safely in Terran's possession, we could make it look like he rescued it during the staged miraculous escape. But our precious research materials ended up lost through that explosion anyway. I thought Clay was supposed to keep it safe. You misunderstand. The launch pad explosion wasn't the one the capture was lost to. It was lost after the police confiscated it as evidence. It was the courtroom bombing from the other day. Oh, yeah, that's, uh... The capture was there in the courtroom as evidence and was blown to smithereens. Another casualty of the blast. Ultimately, I think the culprit may have known about the switching of the launch pads. What? Wow. The police found a wiretapping device using their investigation today. A bug ab aboard my battleship, a tap on my advanced communication system. A wire on that phone? Yes. A wire on this very phone. I used this phone to give instructions to my staff about the launch pad switch. Just to, to the few select members who knew about the plan. Just before the incident, staff members were coming in and out of launch pad 1. The culprit probably slipped in with them amid the confusion. And planted the bomb then. Like the bomb then? Sorry, that was Phoenix. Yes, if they were tapping your phone, they definitely could pull something like that off. So you really think the same spy is behind this incident and the one seven years ago? Yes, I'm sure of it. And this spy must be the phantom Prosecutor Blackwell has been chasing. Prosecutor Blackwell told me once. The hunt I've been on for the phantom of seven years past continues even still. For starters, that case happened right here at this very space center too. So if we can find this phantom... That's right, we can clear Athena's name. And then there's the matter of Prosecutor Blackwell, too. What about him? Well, if the culprit of seven years ago is the same person as in the current incident, it wouldn't mean Prosecutor Blackwell is innocent. That's still an if, though. Hmm, I wonder how dangerous that guy would be in court without handcuffs. Without handcuffs? going on a ghost hunt. Count me in. It's all over for me. Spin, spin, whirl, whirl, I'm done for. The center of the cosmos is doomed. Do you think it's going to be alright, Daddy? Well, at least he'll be in good company. There must be planets out there he can spin with. Hardy har, shut up. Which reminds me, I'd like to delve a little deeper into the Hat One mission too. If you want to learn more, start with the Space Museum. There's a Hat 1 exhibit there. Oh, don't mind me, I'll just keep spinning here and see how the cosmos unfolds. It's like you achieved spiritual enlightenment or something. I'm sure I'll stop when he gets dizzy. Let's go visit the Space Museum. Okay, it worked for a little while, but it didn't work for very long. Eh. I don't know why I took it off that way. What? <laughs> Maybe if I actually try to center them a bit more. Eh. Which is easier said than done.
Aquí. Eh. I'll see how it goes. Let's see. Where's the exhibit on the launch on the launch seven years ago? There, that's the hat, hat one exhibit. Oh wow, look at that photo of the team. There's Clay and Mr. Starbuck, Director of Cosmos, Aura Blackwell, and even Punko. But I've never seen the woman on the right before. Everybody looks so happy. Well, except for Director Cosmos. Let's check out the newspaper article too. One launch imminent, and there's a photo of the Hope space probe. Space probe. Uh, I, I guess it's only natural it doesn't talk about it, about the murder or the sabotage. I mean, we're keeping it a secret just like the director said. Daddy, take a look at that jacket. It must be the Hat One team's uniform jacket. It's the same design as the one Apollo was wearing, the one that belonged to Clay. Actual jacket worn by a Hat One team member, it says. Not a replica, huh? I wonder if it was Mr. Starbucks. Hello? Oh, Miss Woods, what brings you here? I... I heard Tina got arrested, so I... I've been looking for you, Mr. Wright. I thought, I thought you might be here, at the scene. You must be so worried, but rest assured, I'm going to do my very best to defend her. Tina's going through such a hard time. I hope she doesn't lose heart. Even just coming back to this place must have been really difficult for her. Huh? You mean the Cosmo Space Center? What? You didn't know? She used to live here when she was a little girl. Sh she did? No, I didn't know. No wonder she knew so much. Miss Woods, could you tell me more in detail? Tina's mom worked here. If I remember right, she was a doctor of psychology or something like that. But why was a psychology specialist working at a space research facility? I don't really know, but I do know that she lived and worked here, so Athena lived here too. So it was far from Athena's first time here. I wonder why she didn't mention it. She probably didn't want to talk about it. This place is connected to a very sad memory for her. A sad memory? Can you tell me about it? There was a terrible incident here. It was seven years ago. The same time frame as the Hat 1 la launch. Launch? Launch? Tina's mom, in the robotics lab. She was... Murdered. What? After it happened, Tina stopped coming to school. Poor Athena. And all this time, she never let on at all. I was so worried about her. I came here so many times hoping to see her. But I never saw her again. After a while, we started exchanging letters. But I didn't get to see her face to face for seven long years. And so the first time you'd seen her in seven years was during Professor Cord's case. That's right. And I was so surprised. She was like a completely different person. So cheerful and happy. What was Athena like as a child? She was very sensitive and kind. She didn't talk very much. She liked to draw and paint at home. That's completely different from the Athena we know now. I can't even picture it. She never left the Space Center much because... She was very sensitive to other people's emotions. 
When she went to crowded places, she'd get dizzy from all the emotions flying around. It must be hard to hear people's hearts as well as their voices. She always wore those big, heavy-looking headphones. Baby Athena. Oh my god, so cute. She said her mother made them for her as part of her research. Huh, I wonder what kind of research it was. Because of her special ability, Athena couldn't handle being in school very often. And I was always out sick because of my weak constitution. Maybe that's why we became such good friends. We used to play together here at the Space Center a lot. Brings back memories. Sounds like Athena's mother played a big role here at the Space Center. Oh, Daddy! Show her that picture! And a girl. Good idea. Miss Woods, could you take a look at this for me? Look! There's Thina's mom! The woman on the far right, the one on, in the kimono that's Dr. Mita Sykes. Athena's mo mother's murder. Did it by any chance have any connection to the Hat 1 launch? But, but yes, it did. As I recall, it happened on the day before the launch. Just as I suspected. wasn't the worst of it. One of my staff members was murdered. So this is the murder Director Cosmos was talking about. Does that mean that the crime prosecutor Blackwell was convicted of? It's the murder of Athena's mother. There's a chance her death is somehow connected to the current case. There is? Thank you for all your help, Miss Woods. And please, try not to worry. I won't let anything happen to Athena. You miss it right. I know you'll take good care of her. So we need to investigate the robotics lab and also talk to Athena. We got our plates full, Daddy. I hope we can fit fit it all in before the day is through. At attention center first, then. We have to see Athena before visiting hours are over. Whee! Well, if it isn't Mr. Lawyer, fancy meeting you here. Oh, hello, Detective Fulbright. Your own business? To tell the truth, I'm here to interview Ted Tonate. The one behind the courtroom bombing incident? He suddenly said he's ready to tell the truth about the case. And what he was saying was so incredible, I just had to come right over to hear more. Incredible? What was he saying? Why don't you hang around and hear it for yourself? Really? Us? Are you sure? Ha ah, ah, ha ah. ha! I give you my special permission. Here comes the bomber now. You... What nerve you have to come here. You're here to laugh at me, I suppose. I think I'd waste my breath on you. After all, you're the one who assaulted Apollo and put him in the hospital. Violence, no. Question, okay. Violence? Too bad Apollo didn't get that- get a chance to say that before you attacked him. I- I- Fine, then just answer me this, Mr. Tonate. What's this truth of yours about the courtroom you blew up? No, I didn't do it. I didn't blow up the courtroom. When I killed Detective Arm, there was another person in the room. What? What are you talking about? Who else could have been there? I saw it, I tell you. I saw someone's hand as they were stealing the remote switch. This person was there and witnessed the murder I committed. What? I don't know who it was. But that's who blew up the courtroom. You expect us to buy that? Easy there, Trucy. I don't see any psych locks. So I guess he must not be lying. Pardon me, I got a little carried away. But I'm telling you the truth. I did not detonate that bomb. And there you have it. You can't exactly ignore his claims, of course. So we're going to... We're doing a follow-up. We're even analyzing the bomb itself and what's left of it. 
We haven't found any facts yet, though. Any new facts yet, though. Ow. I have laid it all out piece by piece. Oh, look at all those beautiful little pieces. I... I wish I could have them. Uh-oh. Looks like his geek switch has been activated. Why is the Robocop so sweaty? Just don't question <laughs> anything. Don't question Ace's or any logic. That's like the main giveaway from these games. Just don't question anything that happens. Well, I hope you're all ready for Prosecutor Blackwell's special brand of questioning. No, uh, anything but that. That one was so bad. I'm afraid I have to be off now, too. I was just about to question Miss Sykes. You're going to see Athena now? That's right. Oh, did you folks come to see her? Sorry for the trouble, but could you come back later? Well, off I go. I mean, yes. <laughs> what bad timing. It looks like we'll have to wait until after her questioning is over to see her. And after we came all this way, too. I guess it's back to the space center. Let's go check out the robotics lab, Daddy. Alright, sounds like a plan. So this is the robotics lab, huh? Looks like it's exactly one floor above the boarding lounge. Where people were directed to evacuate from via the emergency ladder. This is where Athena's mother was killed seven years ago. Speaking of someone speaking of someone who works with robots. How do you look? Over there. So they plan to use this bag to carry the capsule. Is that right? Yeah, more or less. Say, why don't we stop talking about the case and have a nice cup of tea instead? Apollo and Aura Blackwell? I wonder what they're talking about. Well, well, come to spoil our fun just when I was enjoying our alone time. Trucy and Mr. Wright. And if it's Apollo you want, you can't have him. He said he's investigating on his own. I respect his wishes. We just came to investigate this lab. Well, this is my lab, so you'll need my permission if you want to do any snooping. I heard about the trial. You made mincemeat out of the director. And suddenly, Starbuck was out and your little subordinate, the princess, was in. Case closed, and they all lived happily ever after. <laughs> mm -hmm. Daddy, say something to her. And I suppose you're going to defend the princess in court, am I right? The princess, huh? I guess she's talking about Athena. Of course, Athena is innocent. Yes, okay. Oh my, such loyalty and trust. She seems pretty suspicious to me, though. The emotionally unstable princess. There's your culprit for you. Don't you agree, Apollo? I... I don't know yet. Apollo! How could you? What's wrong with saying I don't know if it's true? It's a very scientific approach. Your subordinate is more level-headed than you. Or should I say, former subordinate. <laughs> okay. I can't believe it. Does Apollo really suspect Athena? All this laughing has worn me out. Your turn to say something, hunky junk. Mr. Terran, you look pale. Shall I help you through the sick bay? Mr. Terran, that's Apollo you're talking to. Oh, this hunky junk here is mistaking Apollo for Clay. Maybe Apollo is possessed by Clay's ghost. Mr. Terran, how are your injuries? Mr. T -t Terran. Mr. T -t Terran, how are your injuries, Mr. T -t Terran? I guess Clay intends to hang around to haunt the princess that murdered him. Oh, and to haunt the lawyer that defends her too, of course. 
robot that can see ghosts. You're right. And I'm a spirit medium. Sorry, but apparently scientists just don't tell very frightening ghost stories. I intend to defend Athena, no matter what you have to say about it. How perfectly foolish. That kind of blind belief makes people lose sight of the truth. Just like seven years ago. Could you tell me about the incident seven years ago? Why? Do you enjoy trampling on people's feelings and rubbing salt in their wounds? Or do you just want me to talk? Hmm? In that case, what should I ask for in return? I'd like to hear about that incident too. Could you help me understand the, the current case better? Huh? Apollo knows about that case too. Well, if you're the one who's asking Apollo. Come on, hunk of junk You tell the story. Miss Aura, that's private information. If you won't talk, I'll just have to make you talk. <laughs> yes, who cares about personal privacy? Not me. I am ready to utilize my blessed processing abilities to, to impart all available information. Wow, what a magic trick. He's like a completely different robot now. The bodies of all the robots that come through this lab are designed by Miss Aura. I was born seven years ago. Miss Aura was much, much younger than... How, 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 how? 37. Seven years, not that much younger, but sure, let's go with that. Yikes. Watch what you say if you don't want to get recycled, Clunko. And then our hearts were created by that great genius, Dr. Midas Sykes. Simon, wasn't he like 28? Yeah. That like made me lose my mind last time. I was like... <laughs> hearts? Robots with hearts? Can you even make such a thing? Emotions are not irrational things. Our logic and our hearts can be integrated. The two navigation companions created by Miss Aura and Dr. Midas transcend humans. Uh. Uh. Midas. Huh? She just glanced over at her desk. Nobody could continue Midas' research. She and her work were truly one of a kind. And now the two navigation companions are all that's left of Midas here on Earth. The robots are all that's left. Isn't she leaving out a very important someone? They built the ultimate creations together, but now she's gone. I get the feeling Dr. Sykes loved her robots almost as much as she loved her daughter. And almost as much as she loved you. Okay, way to just out her, Apollo. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Don't make me laugh. But you lost someone too, didn't you, Apollo? Your fr friend Clay. I guess you and I are pretty much in the same boat. Huh. Uh, deceased. So we don't know exactly how old she was. But I suppose they weren't like the same... Around the same age. Miss Aura, would you like a tissue? Keep your trap shut, hunky junk. Uncle is an important keepsake of your time with Dr. Sykes. You should treat him better. What does it matter? He doesn't feel pain, and I can always repair his body. Besides, their hearts aren't actually in their bodies. What do you mean by that? The program Midas wrote runs on a separate mainframe. Their bodies are controlled remotely from there. They do that, I guess. Their hearts and memories are there too. These bodies are really just peripherals. So, I can do anything I want to them. I'm not so sure that gives you the right to physically abuse the poor things. But why are you people looking into such an old case now anyway? Well, I believe the culprit of that incident might be the same person as in this case. 
So daddy. <laughs> okay. Kate's going to find out who killed Dr. Sykes too. I'm sure you're aware of who made this killer is. Yes, Prosecutor Blackwell. So it seems. That's a quaint way of putting it. Are you implying you don't think he did it? I can't say anything for sure right now. That's exactly why I'd like to hear your side of it, to help me be sure. I was the one who introduced Simon to Midas, you know? He wanted to learn psychology, he said. To give himself an edge in court. Ah, Prosecutor Blackwell's forte. His infamous power of suggestion suggestion technique. Exactly, and he was oddly serious about it, rather than a teacher-student relationship. He treated her more like how a loyal samurai would treat his sovereign. Huh, he seems more like a lost soul than a dignified samurai to me. He even got along well with that miserable little princess. Why do you call Athena the princess anyway? Well, she is Midas' daughter, after all, although she's nothing like her. Besides, doesn't the selfish little princess always have lots of white knights hanging around? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? White knighting? Okay, sure. Now I think I see why Athena didn't say anything when we ran into Ara yesterday. It all makes sense now. So, she fucking sure does, huh? So the culprit behind the two cases could be the same, huh? That settles it then. What does it settle? None of your business. Just forget you heard anything. How long are you people going to hang around in here anyway? What? But we came here to take a look around. You think you can just waltz in and ransack a person's lab? Show me a search warrant. Uh, we're not the police, so we don't have one. Then get out. Now, Clonko, show them out. Certainly, Miss Aura. Ouch, don't push. My apologies. I'm just following orders. Ugh. What a way to get shown out. The nerve of that woman. What's with that horrible attitude? I guess that's just how she is. Why was Apollo going along with her? I guess it's because they have something in common. Apollo lost Clay, just like how Aura lost Dr. Sykes. Huh, <sighs> I'm really worried about him. He's not himself at all. He's usually not all cool and dark and mysterious like that. I guess that's true. Does she mean he's usually silly and dorky? I'm gonna keep an eye on him. Hey, wait, Trucy, come back! <sighs> She's gone. Hmm. What should I do now? Victor Fulbright is probably still questioning Athena. I guess I'll go back to the office. Alone. Huh. Well, here I am. This office has never felt so... empty. I guess I haven't been here at the office all by myself in a long time. Huh. When I first became a lawyer, my mentor was here with me. And after that, there was always someone by my side. Now I'm getting all sentimental. I must be, be I must be tired. My fucking neighbor again, whatever. Huh? There's something on the floor. What's a letter doing here? Hey, Nick. It's been a while, huh? You miss me? I know this handwriting. I read somewhere that you were holding a trial in the middle of an exploding courtroom. That must have been really... That must have really been something. Although, weird is par for the course with you. I think she, or whatever paper she's reading, is a little off on the details. I'd love to come visit, but I'm right in the middle of a difficult part in my training. So instead, think of me as you watch those steel samurai videos I sent. 
I'm sure they'll cheer you right up. Yours truly, Maya Faye. Good old Maya. It's as if she knew I was feeling down and needed a lift. Maya was my assistant for quite a while. Believe it or not, but she's a spirit medium. This Magatama I use on Psycholox. Maya is the one who gave it to me. God, my fucking neighbor. I can't fucking help you with your TV. Do it yourself, woman. Oh my god. I wonder how this letter got here. Um, Mr. Nick? <laughs> oh, it's you, Pearls. I was so excited, I was like, okay, when, when does Pearl show up? <laughs> that was why I was like scrolling through <laughs> earlier. How you been, Mr. Nick? This is Pearl Fay, and now I call her Pearls. She's Maya's cousin, who is also a spirit medium. A very talented one at that. I've known her since she was eight years old. How old is she now? That was what I wanted to check, but she wasn't there. She still is not there, damn it. Apollo and Athena only met her a few months ago. You didn't come all this way just to bring me a letter, did you? Oh my god, three times. Is your TV really that fucking important? Go and bother someone else. I apologize for barging in. The door was unlocked. But I can't believe there was a big explosion here. Your office doesn't look any different. She's even further off on the details than Maya. I wish I could take you out to eat or something, Pearls, but there's a lot going on. Oh, I knew that. I didn't come here for a social vis visit, you know, Mr. Nick. Did you read the postscript on the letter? Huh? There's more? Oh, yeah. Here it is. P.S. Now you've been too busy to clean or take care of the office, so Pearly said she would come help you. Isn't she sweet? You'd better thank her. Thank her. Her. Oh, so that's what you're doing here. That's awfully nice of you, Pearls. I am Pearls. Thanks to these two. I'm starting to feel a little better. Thank you, girls. Now that I'm here, I'm going to whip this place into shape. You just concentrate on your work and don't mind me at all. I'll need to talk to Prosecutor Blackwell if I want to learn more about this case. With the trial still going on, I must be holding him down with at the, at the, 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 the detention center. No, she's there. She is 17. <sighs> oh my god, she is the same age that Maya was when we met her for the first time. She looks 12. Oh my god, hold on. Let me go and yell at my neighbor for a hot second. Okay. I'm back. You have to investigate a courtroom bombing. It was indeed the TV, by the way. And I'm like, no, I can't fucking help you. <laughs> I told her to stop coming to my door all the time, because it stresses me out. And when the trial's still going on, they must be holding him down at the detention center. So we don't... We do talk to pearls, okay. Has it been a while since you've seen Mystic Maya? Yes, quite a while. She used to drop by the office sometimes to say hello. But she hasn't been by recently. 
It's not even that something is wrong with her TV, she just hits a button and then just like... Literally, you just need to hit the fucking source button. I'm pretty sure that's it. She like hits one button by mistake and then it's just like... <laughs> a boomer, she's an old lady, an old lady. With like a, a walker. She hasn't been by recently. I wonder what she's been up to these days. Become a spirit medium, worthy of heading the Fey Clan. She undergoes a right rigorous training. But she says she's growing really tired of the vegetarian diet. I'll have to have some burgers delivered to her then. I'm sure she would love that. To get where she is, the delivery person would have to climb a steep mountain. I hope she tips them well then. Hardy, 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 hard. Wait. Apparently we... Okay, I guess there is nothing to talk about really. Let's go to the detention center. Well, look who's here. I wonder what they're talking about. All this time you haven't said a word. It's even turning your hair gray. Hmm. I don't have anything to say, Aura. Why don't you go home and play with your dolls? Prosecutor Blackwill! Well, even if you don't, I have plenty, you jerk. Miss Blackwill, don't you think that's enough for today? Enough for today? Today is all there is. When there's no tomorrow. When there's no tomorrow? What is she talking about? We have company, Aura. Please try to calm down. Alright, fine. I see you're just not going to listen no matter what I say. I've had it. If that's the way you're going to be, I have another plan up my sleeve. I hope you're happy, Simon, because I'm done. Do as you please. See if I care. Ugh. Wow, I could cut the tension with a katana. Right, Dono. It looks like Fulbright saved your case in court this morning. What? Oh, yeah, he did. You bounce back to business quick. Prosecutor Blackwell, forgive me, but it was just it was a just thing to do. But as a result, Sykeston was arrested. Is that the just thing to do too? Mr. Lawyer, I'm sorry, but it was evidence. What else could I do? Don't worry about it. I plan to defend her and prove her innocence. I wouldn't take things so lightly if I were you. Right, Dono. This bladeproof glass, right? Prosecutor Blackwell, we're looking into the case from seven years ago. You're looking for somebody you call the Phantom of Seven Years Past, aren't you? Villain, where did you hear about that? This glass is absolutely positively bladeproof, right? No, it wasn't me. I didn't say a single- Whoops. Ouch. At least it wasn't my fault. Senior Boomer. Oh my god. Oh my god, in Insomniac. I just read those. Yeah, one time she showed- actually twice, she showed up at my door. In the middle of the night. And it's awful. Especially when I'm trying to lay in bed and suddenly at like 5 a.m. Someone is at my door and I get incredibly stressed. Like stressed out of my mind. It's no fun. Could you tell me who this phantom is? And also, you didn't really kill Dr. Sykes, did you? Guard, the guest is leaving. Prosecutor Blackwell, please listen to me. 
The culprit in this- in the current case might be the same one. S I, bleh, might be the same as the one in the case seven years ago. If you would cooperate, we could probably solve both cases. Hmm. I suppose I could talk. The one who killed my mentor was, without question, me. I stole Sykes Dono's mother away from her. I destroyed her life. Prosecutor Blackwell. Guard, where are you? Stop dragging your feet, I tell you. There he goes. No, we've upset Prosecutor Blackwell. Now what are we going to do, Mr. Lawyer? There isn't much we can do. Detective Fulbright, do you mind if I ask you just a little more about the old case? Well, I guess it won't make any difference now. What would you like to know? Do you know anything about the trial that got him convicted? A little. The police call the incident the UR1 incident. Fucking the incidents. They just keep showing up. Prosecutor Blackwell was charged with murdering his psychology mentor. Kind of like if you, if your red Mr. Lawyer were to kill you. I don't want to think about that one. There were two decisive pieces of evidence, so a verdict was, was reached very quickly. Two pieces of evidence, huh? Where were they? Let's see. The first was some security camera footage. He was the only one who used the corridors to the murder scene at the time of the at the, th at the time of the crime. The only one, huh? Ouch. That does sound pretty decisive. Could you show me that footage? Oh, sorry. I don't have it with me right now. I guess I'll have to see it some other time. And what was the second piece of evidence? This one's even more incriminating. A photo of the moment of the crime. See? There he is at the crime scene, holding a bloody katana. It was the victims, kept on display in the room. She had a thing for Japanese culture. Wow. It'd be, it'd be hard to explain this one away. Who took this picture, detective? Damn it, I can't look at the picture again. The incident happened the day before the Hat 1 launch. A reporter who had come to do a story on the launch was in the room across from the lab. This just happened to show up in one of the pictures he took. Oh, there it is. Okay, thank you. Prosecutor Blackwell's attitude earlier was so odd. He's definitely hiding something. Oh yeah, you're right. He does have short hair. Damn, how much did it fucking grow in seven years? Prosecutor Blackwell said he was hunting a phantom from seven years ago, didn't he? Yes, and I imagine it's getting more and more urgent as his ex execution date approaches. What did you just say? Execution dates? What? Did I say something? Never mind me, you didn't hear a thing. So he was given the death sentence. Yes, he told me not to tell you people, actually. But I guess there's no sense hiding it anymore. This execution date is tomorrow. I figured. What? Tomorrow? No. Miss Blackwell, don't you think that's enough for today? Enough for today? Today is all there is when there is no tomorrow. But what if the culprit of the current case is the same as the one from seven years ago? Then it would be the worst possible scenario. Prosecutor Blackwell would be executed tomorrow under a false charge. But that would be unthinkable. We have to do something right now. <laughs> I want to do something. I want to, but... We're a lawyer. You know how hard it is to overturn the decision. I know, but why? Why isn't Prosecutor Blackwell putting up any kind of fight? You saw how he was, right? It's been like that ever since his conviction. Totally unco uncooperative. Not even his own sister could persuade him. Uncooperative. He's about to be executed for a crime he didn't commit? This isn't right. Can't let it happen. We have to stop it somehow. Oh, pardon me. Looks like I have a phone call.
Fulbright here. What? What's happening? You've got to be kidding! That's quite a reaction. I bet he's making some big show of it right now. M Mr. Lawyer! The robots! The robots are... Detective Fulbright, get a hold of yourself. Some kind of robot malfunction? Not a malfunction. They're staging a revolt. The machines are rebelling against humans. They've holed themselves up in the space center and taken the visitors as hostages. They did what? No. Trucy! I have to get right over there. This is going to be one heck of a battle. The riot police are here. And the robots really are holding people hostage? Hmm. Look, Mr. Lawyer, what do you suppose that group of people are swarmed around? I was only trying to help this nice person. She said she was lost. You robots have declared war on us humans. You even you even taken hostages already. Stay away from it. You never know what it'll do. He's not a bad robot. Can't you see he's just trying to help me? I recognize that voice. Detective Fulbright, are you okay here on your own? Leave it to me. All right, people. What's going on here? Pearls! Over here! Oh, it was Pearls. Oh, Mr. Nick! Here you are! I heard the terrible news and I got so worried. Thanks, Pearls. I can hardly believe what's happening myself. I'm so glad you found each other. When people are happy, I am happy. My uncle seems the same as before. When people are sad, I am happy. When people are angry, when people are... Oh... Did I say something odd? Did I? Error. Uh-oh. There is something wrong with him. Nah. Looks like he fell asleep. He must have been tired. Hee hee hee. Ha 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 ha. Um, uncle? Ha ha ha, human beings are our enemies. It's time for the machines to take over. No, 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 no. the robots are rebelling. Everybody run. It's an all-out war. It's the end of the world. Ha 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 ha, fools. How could you fall for something so cliche? I'm human too, you idiots. I'm just controlling these robots remotely. What? But it is true that... I've taken hostages, so you better not make me mad. Hey you, hostage one, come here. I'll let you talk to them. Huh? There's something being displayed on Klonko's face screen. It's... the space museum. Daddy? Daddy? Is that you? Trucy! Trucy, is that you? No. Trucy, are you alright? About 15 robots are holding 12 of us hostage, Daddy. They've gone haywire. Researchers, researchers is the one behind it. She's here. Go, uh, uh. Mm, this girl talks too much. Trucy, Trucy, talk to me. Why are you doing this? I'm glad you asked. My demand is simple. I hope that detective is listening. I'll be full right here. I'm all ears. I want you to bring someone to me. Clay Terrence murderer. Athena Sykes. Athena? Now hold on, just one moment. I can't just give in to a demand like that. So you don't care what happens to these hostages, huh? I'll just pick one out then. No, wait! Ugh. Mr. Lawyer! I know I have absolutely no right to make such a ridiculous request, but... You need me to buy some time, right? Got it. I'll see what I can do. Or promise me. Promise me you'll never... You'll never hand Athena over. And you won't give up on the hostages either. Of course I won't. Now I better go contact headquarters. Mr. Nick, how do you plan to buy time? I have no idea yet, but this hostage taker... Could it be... If you don't bring me that little princess, I'll have Hunkadrunk kill all the hostages. Princess. 
One could jump. There's only one person this could be. In which case, there must be something I can use as a bargaining chip. I don't have anything to say, Aura. Why don't you go home and play with your dolls? Prosecutor Blackwell! Well, even if you don't, I have plenty, you jerk. Miss Hostage Taker. Athena is not the murderer. What are you talking about? She's been arrested, and they've got her in detention. I'm telling you the truth. Look, the person you want is the real killer, right? Well, it's not Athena. It's someone else. Alright, let's hear your stupid little theory. Who is this real killer? I don't know yet, but the culprit is the same as the one in the case from seven years ago. You are one incident. I believe you have a personal interest in that case. Hmm. It's too late to change what's going to happen now, no matter how wrong it is. But is it really too late? You can still do something about it. You might even be able to fix it. Just... What exactly are you proposing? What can I do about the seven-year-old case to satisfy the hostage taker? Retry it in court. I propose we retry the case from seven years ago. If you make that demand now, I'm sure nobody will deny you. It wouldn't be an official trial, but at least we could find out the truth. He, he, he. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, that's good. Real good. Hey, detective. I'll give you one hour. Get a courtroom ready. One hour? But that's impossible. Please give me at least until tomorrow. If you don't mind losing hostages, you can take all the time you want. Oh, but wait. If we're going to have a retrial, we'll need a prosecutor. Don't worry. I'll take care of that. She will? And I guess I can be fair and let you come in and check out the crime scene. But Hunker Drunk here will be watching you, so don't try anything funny. You got that? Now follow Hunker Junk. Riot police, make way. We're coming through. Mr. Nick, wait! I'll help you with the investigation. Thanks, Pearls. I appreciate that. Okay, we're going in. Laura dropped us off with a warning not to touch anything until she got back. I wonder what's taking so long. But we can't really start the investigation yet, can we? Even if we could, this mess makes it hard to tell what the room was like seven years ago. Mr. Wright. Ah! It's the hostage taker. I'm back to my usual self now. You are still being monitored, however. But more importantly, an important guest has arrived. A guest? Trust you've been well, Bright. <laughs> Hitchworth, what are you doing here? This is Miles Edgeworth. We've been friends since we were kids. He faced off in court a number of times back when he was a prosecutor, but now. Prosecutor Edgeworth? Oh, you're not a prosecutor anymore, are you? Um, he's chief prosecutor now. Pretty soon it'll be a year, right? The title is nothing more than a title. Um, don't we have more pressing issues to discuss? You got glasses. So what are you doing here, Edgeworth? Pepter chose me as the prosecutor for the UR1 case. Wow, oh, she's good. She went all the way up to the top. I gathered all the information I could in the short time that I had. I'll give you a rundown. 
I'm always so well prepared, Prosecutor Edgeworth. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate this. I could really use the help. Let's start with a brief overview. The victim was a psychologist, Dr. Mita Sykes. Yeah, Athena's mother. Seven years ago, on the 7th of October, her body was found here in this very room. I have two crime photos and the police notes. Um, the police notes on them for you to see. Why didn't you bring Kay? She could have just recreated everything. God damn it. <gasps> what a terrible way to die. This other photo shows the other side of the room, I see. I also have the autopsy report for you. Damn, so quick. The murder weapon was the victim's own katana found in the scene. Yes, Detective Fulbright mentioned she was into Japanese culture. It's from the investigations game. It's his theme. The body was found by a Space Center staff member and two police officers. The police were called in because of the sabotage threat on the Hat-1 launch. Yes, and Director Cosmos mentioned this too. A few hours after the body was discovered, a suspect was arrested. The suspect was Simon Blackwell, a young prosecutor. I hear this trial was over in a flash. Yes. A guilty verdict was declared in only one session. Not only did he plead guilty, but there was the size of evidence against him too. Security camera video. And a photo of the moment of the crime, as I recall. But did Prosecutor Blackwell have a motive? Hmm. To this day, his motive is still unknown. He insisted he did it, but he would never say why. So that means he must still be hiding something. Right. And there's another aspect of the case that was never revealed to the public. Yeah, I know. The part about the spy, right? Right. How on earth do you know about that? Director Cosmos told me after a bit of pressure. He told me the told me he, he told me espionage espionage and sabotage were behind the Hat One miracle. Don't worry. I won't tell anyone. I've always been good at keeping secrets. Well, I might as well tell you now. And they really do suspect Blackwell of being a spy. They think he sabotaged the rocket and killed Dr. Sykes to steal the moon rock. But if he can prove that the Hat 2 bombing is the work of the same spy, he can stay the execution? It's a possibility. That's why I intend to help you any way I can. Thanks, Edgeworth. Now we all, all I have to do is comb this room for evidence. Let's do it together! That's also why I scrolled down. <laughs> I was like, okay, when does when does Edgeworth show up? <laughs> I was like, damn it, it's so long until. <laughs> okay, workbench. It's about as cluttered as my office, but I think it's a workbench. So Nick, I think this must be a kitchen. Look at this photo. See the cute little food processor? That isn't the food processor pearls. That's the hope capsule. Wait, Edgeworth calls her pearls too? Interesting. It was scheduled to be loaded onto the hope space probe that fateful day. The three people who came to collect the capsule dis discovered the body. At first on the scene, huh? That's confirmed. <laughs> For real though. A staff member and two police officers, was it? They were here to collect the capsule, which reminds me. So they plan to use this bag to carry the capsule, is that right? Yeah, more or less. Say, why don't we stop talking about the case and have a nice cup of tea instead? Apollo and Aura Blackwell, I wonder what they're talking about. Edgeworth, did those three people have a bag with them for transporting the capsule? Oh, you mean this? It's a custom-made, shock-resistant bag, but how did you know? Oh, I just overheard Apollo making an inquiry about it, that's all. Hmm, 
So he is looking into the case from seven years ago on his own, is he? Alright, uh, slide to the left. Horace desk. Horace desk is a mess. No, that doesn't surprise me. Oh, I just want to dive in and straighten it out. Wait, before you do. Meet us. Huh? She just glanced over at her desk. It's Mita Sykes. Clonko, can I talk to you? I really hope he's back to normal. You wish to speak to me, Mr. Wright. If you're going to hit me, please avoid the face area. Hey, don't put me into the same class as that woman. What was Aura like seven years ago at the time of the incident? When mother died, Miss Aura was confused. Huh, so he calls Dr. Sykes' mother. Aura Blackwell, Miss Aura. With the loss, she exhibited a severe catacolamine imbalance. Oh my god. Excuse me, but I have no idea what that means. Pardon me, searching for alternative expression. She would spend the nights crying and then take out her feelings on those around her. After Prosecutor Blackwell was found guilty, she repeatedly demanded a retrial as well. That is correct, but without new evidence, her requests were ignored. And then, little by little, Miss Aura began to change. She started to hate it when I called her Mama Aura. And before long, she started hating the court system and abusing Klonko, huh? I've heard her destroyed so many lives. Right, take a look at this paper on Dr. Sykes and Miss Blackwell's research. Klonko and Klonko. Are the robots with hearts that Dr. Re Dr. Sykes created? Can you determine the presence of a human with a heartbeat? A heartbeat detect a heartbeat detection system lets them determine when a human is present. In addition, they can recognize people by their ID tag or facial features. And they can infer people's emotions by analyzing their tone of voice. That's amazing. Hey, I don't know Edgeworth. He might even be more human than you. What's that supposed to mean? It kind of sounds like these robots can do what Athena does. Gotta tease the husband a little bit, you know, husband and yeah, a husband, the husband. Mm. Okay, where am I? Examine emergency ladder. Where the hell is the emergency ladder? Oh, maybe maybe the big box that says emergency ladder. An emergency ladder. It must be the. This must be the one that they used during the the evacuation. The explosion disabled the, the elevators, so I lowered my emergency ladder, like the like the detective lead, leading the evacuation told me to. As Miss As Miss Blackwell was climbing down the side of the building, she saw the culprit inside. I wonder which would have been scarier. That or looking down. Operating table. It looks like an operating table. It's in the photo too. Yes, it was here then as well. With the vic with the victim's body lying on it. There's a button here. Oh I know! I'll try pushing it. Pearls! Don't touch the- Oopsie! Hey, it's moving! Hmm... It appears to be a robot assembly device. Disassemble anything in a flash. Push the dis dismantle button. That sounds pretty neat. Can I push it, Mr. Nick? Please don't push any more buttons, Pearls. Hold on. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna do that, I guess. This is one heck of a robot. There's something written on it. Is this, is this supposed to be a poem? I cut down everyone, anyone who displaces me. I make the rules. I am the law. I wield the ultimate gavel of judgment. I am Judge Tron. JTO2. I don't believe we need to bother with that, Pearl. Oh, then he just switches back to Pearl. Okay, I see. It's not even completed yet. It was a Fro Freudian slip. I see. I see. That's right, Pearls. There's no sign of it in the photo from seven years ago, either. We were, we were building the Hope Space Probe here at the time. The murder occurred after the space probe had been removed from the room. So it was long gone by the time someone took this picture, huh? You can see the probe in this newspaper photo. Yes, and you can see the stolen moon rock there, too. That strange black and yellow thing on the left side of the picture. Note that the same rock is absent from the crime scene photo. Not only that, but before the launch, a very valuable piece of moon rock was stolen. I hear there's lots of research into moon rocks and stardust from asteroids these days. They say the results could potentially have a huge impact on all of civilization. It's like we're in a new space race with every other country out there. So the person who stole it... I think it was our spy? I'm sure of it. Dr. Sykes probably killed because she was a, ro a roadblock in their plan. Unfortunately, the government thinks Prosecutor Blackwell is the culprit. Well, I guess that's about it for this room. So what do you think, Wright? Any ideas? There are still a lot of gaps in the evidence, but I'll pull it off somehow. After all, you asked me to prove Blackwell's innocence. Right, right Edward? He did? Yep, he called it a special request. He reached out to me while I was still disbarred. So that was what sparked you to get your attorney's badge back. Yep, the Blackwell case. Right, I have a special request. I want you to clear one of my subordinates of suspicion. <laughs> suspicion, I, I can speak. Hey, I'm not even a lawyer anymore, remember? Haven't been one for a long time. That eight-year misunderstanding has been cleared up, and you must be eager to return. I'm sure you're familiar with the other case that ushered in the Dark Age of the Law. Very soon, a convict will stand as a prosecutor in court. I want you to keep an eye on him. Oh, just when I'm beginning to actually like the job I have now. Right. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. Because of the espionage as aspect, I wasn't free to give you all the details. Hey, no need to apologize, since like I said on the phone the other day. I know that the type of criminals you're after now aren't small frights anymore. It looks like your target finally decided to make a move. Yeah, it's for this very reason I returned. Time to bring it to an end. I'm going to end the Dark Age of the Law. That's what this is all about. The Dark Age of the Law? It sure comes up a lot these days on TV and in the papers. I hear there are more false charges and fabrication of evidence than ever. When I became Chief Prosecutor, the court system had already lost the people's trust. It all began eight years ago. A lawyer was caught fabricating evidence. And a year after that, a prosecutor was found guilty of murder. Wait, do you mean... That's right, that's right. He's talking about my case and Prosecutor Blackwell's. And it was a downward spiral after that. An absolute nightmare. After those two cases, the mass media launched an all-out attack on, all, on the courts. Public opinion was tainted, and before long, the legal world itself was sucked into it. It's such a shame. Once suspicion forms, it's very hard to shake. Lawyers and prosecutors were supposed to trust each other, pursue the truth together. It 
so sad when people begin to cast doubt. They start lying to themselves and each other. Yes, and do absolutely anything to win. We're in an age now where winning is valued far more than the, than the truth. I'm sure it's cost our new chief prosecutor to lose many a night's rest. Is it just me or did his brow get even more furrowed than the last time I saw him? Hmm. The hostage taker's disdain for the courts is a perfect example of the, of the times. Ah, it sure is. <laughs> Do you have any idea who the hostage taker might be? Well, somebody who mistrusts the court system and who can manipulate robots. It can really only be Aura Blackwell. Who else but her would want a retrial of that case from seven years ago so badly? Simon Blackwell's older sister and the owner of this room. I agree with your conclusion. Perhaps she intended to force Miss Sykes to confess. Actually, I think she had a much more horrific plan in mind for Athena. The important thing is for you to solve you are one and prove Blackwell's innocence. And then maybe she'll re release the hostages. I'm counting on you, right? To set that prosecutor and those hostages free. And I'll be counting on you in court to help me too. Of course, I'll do everything I can to help uncover the truth. As this isn't an official trial, I'm more at liberty to be a, a little unorthodox. Mr. Wright, are you finished with your investigation? Yeah, but I'd like you to tell the hostage taker something for me. I have to go to the the, 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 the... I have to go to the detention center. I can't start the trial until I've talked to Athena. She's already given her consent. I'll accompany you to the detention center. So I'm still being watched, huh? I'll see you in court, Edgeworth. Hmm. Even if it will be an undocumented trial. It'll be good to face you in court again. We love straights. She was right by my side only a few short hours ago. I feel like I haven't seen her in ages. Oh, is it right? And Pearly, too. I knew you would come. After all, the first step to the is the interview with the defendant. This dude's being gross. Because you're my friend, and I was worried about you. <laughs> Thanks, boss. I'm not the only one who's worried, either. Really? Who else? I saw Miss Woods today. She was so beside herself, she came to find me. She told me you used to live in the Cosmos Space Center. No wonder you knew so much about the place. Oh, so you know, huh? I'm sorry I didn't tell you. That's all right, but there are some other things I'd like to ask you. Two lawyers chilling in a courtroom six feet apart because... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Only six feet, though? Like, how small is that courtroom? <laughs> but there are some other things I'd like to ask you. Sure. You can ask me anything. I promise I won't keep any more secrets from you. Tell me about the day Clay was murdered. I... I was actually at the Space Center that day. Hmm. Maybe? In, in the space museum. I think it's a bit more than six feet, though. Right. Where the, right where the culprit fled to? That's not good. I never could fully deal with what happened seven years ago. I mean, understandable. When your mother just gets murdered like that. When I saw the center again during the news coverage of the Hatun launch, 
I thought maybe if I went there, things would be different this time. I must have taken a lot of courage to face your past like that. So I went to the Space Museum the evening before the explosions. This was before the launch pads had been switched. There was a sign that said close for repairs and they weren't letting anybody in. Yeah, the director wouldn't very well switch the pads if there were people in there. But I snuck in anyway. Did you want to see that hat one group photo? The one with your mother in it? I did. But what I really wanted to see was her jacket. The jacket on display. That was Dr. Sykes. And I should have known it wouldn't be easy to get over such a traumatic experience. The second I saw that jacket, it all came rushing back to me. Everything around me went hazy and I couldn't see. I tried to get out of there somehow. I guess I passed out. When I came to, I was in the passage behind the rocket. I was in the shadows where people couldn't really see me. Maybe you got confused and went the wrong way when you were trying to leave. How long do you think you were unconscious, Athena? I was out until about noon of the next day. I didn't even know about the explosions. When I woke up, nobody was around, so I just went out into boarding lounge too. My mind must have still been fuzzy because my memory is vague after that. I don't remember how I got home. No memory, huh? It's just gonna be tough. Which means... What if I'm the one who killed Clay? I think that's enough of that, Athena. Let's talk about something else. So during the entire incident, she was unconscious in the space museum. Of course I believe her. But will anybody else? What kind of research was Dr. Sykes, your mother, doing? Machines that could tell people's emotions by their tone of voice. And my special ability. Someday when people travel to distant planets, their companions will be robots. So she said that they had to be able to understand how their human companions felt. Wow! Robots that can understand people! It was just a convenient subject for her research. All she ever did was work, and she never paid any attention to me. Oh, sorry about that, dredging up all that old stuff. No need to apologize. I guess her home life was... complicated. Oh, by the way, Miss Woods said something about you always wearing headphones. She, she always wore those big, heavy-looking headphones. She said her mother made them for her as part of her research to wear them every time I went out. Oh, I hated them so much, but she wouldn't listen. What were they for? Oh, she gave me some kind of explanation. But I don't remember now. I was, it was too difficult for a little kid to understand. Okay, but let me say this one thing. I don't think your mother only thought of you as some handy subject for her research. I, I want to believe that. Just about the only things my mother left me with are widgets. And this earring. Oh, it's beautiful! It's made of a piece of real moon rock she had for research. Maybe she did love me, in her own way. I'm sure of it. I'm really sure she did. Because that's what I want to believe too. Better ask her a little more about her mother's research. I should show her the paper I found in the robotics lab. The paper? This? Oh, the Panko series! You must have gone to the robotics lab. You seem to really love Panko and Clanko. Yeah. My mother made them and I grew up around them, you know? Oh, 
there's one of those cute little ribbon robots and ribbons robots in this photo too <laughs> see Panko's bandages I put those on her I just run them around and around pretty bad job huh <laughs> but I really put all my my all into it I hardly left the center in those days so I didn't have any human friends besides Junie I didn't really understand the difference between robots and people back then I thought that if a robot broke, bandaging it would help it get better. What a weirdo I was. It looks like there's something written on the bandages. Yeah, I wrote stuff like, get well soon, Panko. But in the end, my mom just put her on the operating table and fixed her in a flash. Oh, that must be the thing I made move in the robotics lab. I was so impressed by what my mom did. I even asked her if she would put me on the table and fix me if I ever got hurt. It looked just like magic to me what she could do. A little girl who grew up around robots. She seems to have some good memories of it. On a different subject, did you hear about the person holding up the space center? Yes, a little. And this person has even taken hostages. Is it? Sweet. Ooh, it looks great. I guess I better spare her the news about Trucy. Well, after some negotiating, we agreed to do a retrial of the case from seven years ago. What? You're kidding me! That means Prosecutor Blackwell might. Yep, I know he's innocent. I just have to prove it. So wait, did you know him back then? Yes, he used to come visit my mom a lot. He studied psychology under her and would sometimes ask for advice on his legal cases. He was very kind and considerate and straight as an arrow. Unlike now, where he's more twisted than the basket of snakes. That's why I took the witness stand during his trial seven years ago. Please, you have to listen to me. He didn't kill her. His heart is screaming that he didn't kill her. I was a fool. How could anybody else know what I was talking about? She heard the voice of his heart. Sounds like a good idea. You were only 11 then, right? You were very brave just to give testimony. Cross is right. You did the very best you could at the time. But nothing I said did any good. I was a shaking and scared little girl and small and ineffectual. Even after I went to live with my relatives in Europe, I stayed close up in my, closed up in my shell. You're different now. You're always so bright and cheerful. Thanks. That's because one day, I came to realize that I had to fight. I couldn't give up. I exercised hard and I studied hard. I wanted to become the strongest lawyer I could be. No! God damn it. We get it. Damn it. I thought it automatically went up there, but no, it just chose the same thing again. There we go. I wanted to save Simon, but I had no idea how. Then I met Mr. Wright, and thanks to him, I realized that if I became a lawyer, I could prove that Simon was innocent. He also realized that psychology could help me do this. It could also help me out people in court. I mean, psychology was my mother's specialty. When I studied it, I felt like she was there with me, supporting me. It doesn't seem like Athena knows that Prosecutor Blackwell is due to be executed tomorrow. I wanted to prove Simon's innocence personally. I wanted to do it so bad. 
Even now, I want to fly out of here and go save him. Come to think of it, she said something like that during the Theorist Legal Academy trial. She mentioned there was somebody she wanted to save. She must have been talking about Prosecutor Blackwell. I heard some prison guards say that you had an interview with Simon. How was he? What did he say? No, I can't tell her. How can I lie to Athena? He was doing well. He was happy about the possibility of being proven innocent. He was? I wonder if he smiled like he used to. Back then. If I can't prove Prosecutor Blackwell's innocence in this trial, I don't think Athena will ever forgive me. I just have to free him. Failure is not an option here. Ah, I thought you might be here, Mr. Lawyer. We're in trouble. We are? What is it? I couldn't find a single open courtroom. They are all in session. No, this is an emergency. Hmm, it's very difficult to interrupt your trial once it's underway. My phone. From Trucy. I told you I'd give you one hour. I guess it's time to pick one of the hostages. No, wait! We still have a little more time! Besides, all of the courtrooms are being used right now. Make all the excuses you want, but you won't get more time. Your daughter is first. The poor thing, she's a little too young to die, don't you think? No! Don't you dare hurt her! There has to be something I can do. The cruelest injustice is about to befall us. No, this can't be happening. Mystic Maya, help us. Wait a minute. Maya? I read somewhere that you were holding a trial in the middle of an exploding courtroom. It must have really been something, although we're just par for the course with you. A courtroom? Move up. That's it! There is a courtroom we can use after all. Okay, time's up. Too bad. Any last words you'd like to say to her? Hold it! Aura, please don't add to the crimes you've already committed. So you know who I am, do you? It wasn't like I was trying to keep it a secret anyway. I'm ready to start the trial. You can hold it. In the ruins of courtroom number four. The one blown up by the bomber. Oh! What a wonderful idea, Mr. Nick! I never would have thought of that. An astonishing trial in an astonishing location. I guess it's only befitting. I'll go get the place ready right away. I didn't exactly pick the place for its astonishing factor. How about it? Are you ready to have your brother's innocence proven? My brother? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did I forget to mention? It's not Simon you'll be defending. What? Not... Prosecutor Blackwell? I indict Athena Sykes. On the charge of murdering her own mother. You'll be defending the little princess there. The one behind the glass. What? See you in that mountain of rubble you've chosen for our courtroom. Mr. Wright. What is she talking about, Athena? Of course. Didn't it ever occur to me before? If Prosecutor Blackwell is innocent, somebody else had to have been the true culprit. Did I... Did I... Kill my own mother? No. No! Wait, it can't be true. Mr. Nick, what's the matter? I see. I see five black psych locks. I've seen these kinds of locks before. Dark, black locks protecting a secret hidden deep inside a person's heart. And there's no way to remove them.
Hmm. Hold on. Let me see. What the... Yes, the last time was with the... Um, Kristoff. Okay, it seems like the last two chapters are kind of long. So, you know what? I said I was going to take tomorrow off. Uh, I'm gonna finish that tomorrow. Just because it's getting kind of late, you know? When people have, like, work and or school and stuff. <laughs> so, I'm gonna end it here. Let me just save. Yeah. So that means I will finish this game uh, tomorrow. And then I just have the DLC left. Which I'm gonna spend probably the rest of the week on. Okay, bye! <laughs> yeah, my mom was the one that like called me earlier today. And like told me about it, and I was like, oh, oh, yeah, you're right. I didn't even notice. I mean, how can I notice? <laughs> so, yeah. It feels weird taking so much time to get through <laughs> a nice attorney game now, considering I've been, like, just running through them up until this point. But now I'm, like, trying to, like, focus more on myself, too, and, like, take breaks whenever I need them. So, yeah. But Edgeworth is back? How great is that? <laughs> and he got there so fast. Like, there was this comic, but I've always kind of, like, assumed it to, like, be kind of, um... Like, as, as, a, as a joke, I guess, in a way. But no, that's literally what happened. <laughs> I can't believe it. That's amazing. Ha! Ah, so, yeah. I hope to see you guys here tomorrow for the end of Dual Destinies. And then I'll take Tuesday off. And I'll be back on Wednesday to start redacted. <laughs> Which will be interesting, to say the least. Yay! I love having you here. It's very nice. I'm sorry if I... I I'm, I'm, I'm not the best at, like, words and stuff, but I really appreciate having you here. It's a lot of fun. So yeah, with that, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. Bye, have a great evening. <laughs>